We're live. White Bear Nation, are you ready? Welcome inside South Campus here. It is White Bear Lake versus Osseos. It's the third home game of the season for White Bear Lake. White Bear Lake, it's tackle cancer night. Gabe Bartlett, you know, we can't say it enough. Congratulations. Another Thanks. year, you continue to uh, survive. Much appreciation, love you. As he's ready for football, he came back just for this game, not for any wild games, nothing like that. He's here for White Bear Lake football. He's here to cheer on his uncle. He loves Ryan Bartlett with a dying passion. Well, he is my uncle and he is family's ex, so I do love my uncle very much. He's a, been a big supporter my whole life. But as you said, White Bear Lake football, we are ready to go. And White Bear Lake off to a good start this year, 4-2 and two record. And even their two losses, Zach, they lost by three to Blaine in the home open or in the opening game of the year. Tough loss. They played them tough the whole game, just couldn't finish it on. And then a loss by seven to Stillwater. And Stillwater ranked top five in the state. So even in their losses, White Bear Lake has been really, really good this year. They're a good team. They've done a lot of things right on both sides of the ball. And it's, it's going to be fun to see what they can do tonight on uh, Tackle Cancer Night. Well, here we go. The Bears coming in at four and two. Osseo Orioles, they're coming in with a record of three and three. The Orioles coming in back-to-back -back wins. They both have been on the road. White Bear Lake coming off of a win as well against Anoka, that game on the road. Now they are back here at South Campus to finish the regular season and boom! We are underway as the Bears will receive it and it's a fair catch at the 30 yard line where the Bears will take over. Yeah, just a little squib kick right there. I wonder if Osseo was maybe trying to get a little chip kick and hope that White Bear was going to try to try to return it, maybe force a fumble or a muff punt, but a good awareness by the returner for White Bear to just signal for the fair catch and not, not risk getting hit. White Bear Lake led by senior QB, Gavin Knudsen. Gavin Knudsen, so far this year we have five games in terms of stats. He's 57 for 97, 984 yards. He's got eight TDs. Maybe he has over 1,000. We don't know as the play gets blown up early for White Bear Lake, a short gain on the play. Gavin Knudsen, he's been solid for the Bears. He's looking to get things done. He also has an amazing backfield as well. The backfield for White Bear Lake mainly consists of Chris Heim, and Kashan Limscombe, they've been excellent this year. They love to do jet sweeps with Rayshon Brakes, who I remember him frequently last year. Speaking of Rayshon Brakes. Look at that. Rayshon Brakes into the open. He has one man to beat. There he goes down the middle of the field, still on his feet, racing 10, 5, and then he's brought down on his ankles to the 5. A quick pitch. It's Rayshon Brakes. The speedster himself getting this place electric. The crowd loves it. And we have an early first and goal on the second play of the game for the White Bear Lake Bears. A great play right there. They're going to send breaks in motion around the backfield, give him a toss while he's already moving. So he's got a ton of speed moving forward. And White Bear Lake, great blocks. He did, I don't think he got hit until the five-yard line on that play. Rayshon breaks. That was his 36 carry or tw excuse me, 25th carry possibly. We have through fifth g five games, he's been excellent. Over 200 yards on the ground now. That one a big explosive play as the handoff goes for just a couple more yards as Keyshawn Limscombe takes it. And it looks like it's just a gain of one. It'll be second and goal. I wonder if they'll go back to Rayshon Brakes, try something outside. They've had two up the middle run plays. Neither have gone very far, but man, Rayshon Brakes is really explosive on any part of the field. I wouldn't be shocked if they go to him if he's out there. It looks like it's Chris Heim in the backfield. They got two backs. Knudsen takes the handoff off to Heim. Heim running, breaking through tackles in four yards. Score for Chris Heim who is back tonight, and he has been excellent. Add another TD to him and the Bears here on the board early. What a great drive there. Yeah, a perfect start to the game for uh, for White Bear Lake. They, it's it's built on the run game. Everything they do is built on the run game, and as you talked about, Knutson is a very good quarterback. He can throw the ball really well, but they want to run the ball. They want to power run. 
they play that very tight formation with a running back only about five yards behind Knutson. He's going to power run that right up the middle, and that sets up their whole offense. That's what set up Brake's big play as well. Man, power run game starting off good for White Bear. Eli Trichel with the extra point. He's been solid as well kicking. Has only kicked a couple field goals. Extra point, he's only missed a couple. As another one goes through for him, it's 7-0 here for White Bear Lake in the early going. Well, we're gonna get to see the White Bear defense now, which has been a very solid unit, and a guy to watch. Number 12, I believe, Michael Delaney, a senior. He has had a absolute tremendous year defensively forcing turnovers and making plays. He's been outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, today yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens for the Bears now defensively as they will get set to kick off. Only not even two minutes have gone by, a minute and 54 seconds gone. As Trico will get set to kick off, teams will reset. We'll see what Osseo has to bring. Osseo, they have a great run game. We'll get to that in a second. Freshman players will walk the stands during the end of the first quarter to collect money as well as at halftime. Eli Trinkel getting set for the kickoff. Off his own 40. Short kick received at the 30 by the Orioles and quickly brought down. It's Michael Delaney, who Gabe mentioned just earlier, getting in the early tackle on special teams and the defense getting set to get to work here. Well, White Bear Lake does that little chip kick and it worked earlier in the year. They had a play where they chipped it and nobody on the other team returned it and they picked it up and that becomes their ball and the offense got the ball right back. So I would expect White Bear Lake every kickoff to just do that little chip kick and try to play for a recovery. Well, the Osseo Orioles, they're led by senior running back B.J. Zakiel, who last week shredded up the field, had four touchdowns. Orioles had over 300 yards on the ground. They were fantastic. They only had 33 passing yards last week. They didn't need to throw the ball. They got the victory against Eastridge. And here they have, or looks like it's the Bears early offsides. It'll be first and five to start for the early for the Orioles. And yeah, the Orioles did a little motion right there and they caught White Bear Lake napping early. It's a cold night. Guys are trying to get going right away. Possibly another early jump, no flags. As it looks like. Well, Osseo's gonna do the same thing it looks like as White Bear, power running, tight formation. This is gonna be a game of which team can physically last longer with this cold weather and who's gonna pretty much who's just gonna outmuscle the other team. That's what this game looks like so far. BJ Zacco, gain of one. Second down coming up for the Orioles. Getting ready out of the break. White Bear Lake in that 4-3. In motion and getting the jet sweep is BJ Zakiel. However, not much on the game. Instead, actually, it's a big tackle for loss for the White Bear Lake Bears. It looks like these two teams have very similar offenses. Tight formation, jet sweeps are run right up the middle. That's what it looks like, except it sounds like White Bear throws a little bit more than Osseo does. So we'll see how that plays a factor this game. Third. Third and long coming up for the Orioles. Bears looking to get a three and out here early, get the football back. Take the snap, Zakiel again, breaking tackles. And just one tackle, maybe gets a yard on the play. It'll set up fourth down, punting unit will come onto the Orioles and a good three and out there for White Bear Lake's defense. Well, this that's the big downside to running that very tight formation. That's actually, a what a lot of colleges and NFL teams used to run a, a while ago. It's a pretty simple offense, but unless you get good yardage on first and second down, it makes it so hard to get convert third down and longs. So third down and nine for White Bear Lake in this game, that's gonna be crucial. If it's anything less than third down and like five, it's gonna be close, but if it's long, White Bear Lake's defense should make, be able to make a stop every time. Low snap and a very short kick, just bounces past the 50. Dribbles down and the ball will decide to take a halt 
on White Bear Lake's own 43. That's where the Bears and Knudsen will set up shop once again. Rayshon breaks, getting back on there. This receiving core for White Bear Lake, they played a lot last year. Obviously, Rayshon breaks in the mix. Vital Henderson's back. It's a great wide receiver core. You got running backs returning. You got Libscomb. You got Heim. So besides quarterback change, maybe some offensive line change, you got an offense that they've been together. It's exciting to watch as Knudsen sends breaks in motion, gives the handoff, I believe, to that's to Lipscomb. Well, right there, Zach, they sent breaks in motion and they faked the pitch to him. The, about half the defense bit on that pitch because breaks had a big play, and they went to Lipscomb right up the middle, and he got an easy nine yards on the play because everyone was worried about Rayshon breaks. Run game so far for White Bear Lake being effective, the play calling being effective. I believe we haven't had a pass yet in this game. We have Both not. these teams run heavy for the most part. It'll be interesting to see how the gridiron is determined between these two lines as a quick handoff once again to Lipscomb and once again he gets a solid gain as he will enter into Osseo territory inside the 40 yard line. Bears continue to get a march on down the field. Power running, White Bear, they're just going to run it right down the throat of Osseo until they step up and stop this. And as it stands right now, this White Bear like offensive line is doing an outstanding job. Back-to-back -back run plays where it took maybe three, four yards before Limscomb had to, had to get by a defender. Knudsen will go back under center. And it looks like it's Soccer who's behind him, but then it looks like miscommunication possibly. Timing might have been off as well as Rayshon Brakes drops the ball and just be able to fall on it, but a massive loss on first down for the Bears. Looks like a loss of about seven yards, so you're looking at second and very long for the Bears, and it'll be interesting to see now what Bartlett wants to do. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, that power run game has worked tremendously so far, but I wonder if you if you test out the secondary of Osseo right now. You know, it's a cold night. It was raining earlier. I wonder if that football's a little damp, and... We're going to see them line up a little differently now, Zach, in a pistol rather than right behind the center. Soccer will go right behind and takes a snap, maybe looking for a pass. Line pressure coming on, and Knutson, all he can do is throw it away. The in closest and maybe intended target was Travis Domshot, younger brother of Tanner Domshot, who recently had graduated a couple years ago, playing at corner for White Bear Lake. He had some solid years playing down at Gustavus now. And it's great to see his father, obviously one of the assistant coaches for what on White Bear Lake staff. They got a good bloodline here in White Bear Lake is ooh, Osseo almost jumped on the hard count. Knut's in a out of the shotgun, takes the snap, doesn't like what he sees, pressure, decides to scramble, will maybe get a yard. And that'll set up fourth down and a very long way to go. And the Bears will send on the punting unit. Fumble, costly for White Bear Lake, not able to recover from it. And here we go, a punt for White Bear Lake, first of the game for them. You know, I didn't love that play right there by Gavin Knutson. I thought the way he stepped up in the pocket, he created some space. There really wasn't any pass rush in front of him. He didn't really need to go out of the pocket like he did. He could have waited another second, given his guys downfield a chance, but that's all right. He made a disciplined play on the play before and didn't try to force anything, didn't let it turn over. That's all right. You're okay. Oh, and a... And it went off the returner of Osseo, and White Bear Lake picks up the football. This should be White Bear ball. Refs have not made a signal about what, whose ball it is. They just marked it was out of bounds. I think he might have been out of bounds, and the ball was out of bounds. That's what it's looking like. No official signal yet from the refs. One referee, it looks like, is saying it's White Bear Lake ball, but still nothing definitive. And there it is. It'll it be is White Bear. White Bear Lake ball, they'll set up shop at the 15, and a huge costly mistake for the Orioles. That was a, you know, you, you want to talk about maybe according to plan, maybe that was White Bear's plan to punt it, but that was a heads up play by White Bear's defense. The returner for Osseo, the rule is if it hits them before it hits a White Bear player, it becomes a live ball if they don't catch it, and right there, uh, Osseo's returner had no intent to pick up that ball, but still hit him. White Bear ball, that's great heads up play by White Bear. 
Run up the middle for the Bears, gain about half of what they need to to set up a first and goal. Five yards maybe out. Second and five coming out. Bears march down to the 10. Second down and five. Vitel Henderson will check out. Dom shot checks in for the Bears. Osseo, this is a huge stop for them. If they can, can if they can get a stop, his first quarter winding down, 440 to go. Knutson will go back under center. Lipscomb and behind in motion is breaks, breaks with the handoff. Jukin waiting patiently, able to get back to the line of scrimmage where it'll be third and five. Yeah, defense was all over that. That was the play that breaks had earlier.
Hey, well, uh, if you're watching this, you're probably looking for White Bear High School football. Um, this is like now, like a, I guess a Halvey cast, or I mean, we have the old horn, Zach Halverson here, Chad Olson, Halverson, Olson Radio Network. We were watching uh, the, the White Bear football game and it just went off the air. And uh, we were wondering why. And we got into a, a, a contact with Zach uh, Chapman who uh, is calling the game along with uh, the rest of the amazing crew we got there. And, um, well, the power went out. So the the press box power is still out from what I've been told. Um, And so is the lighting. They need lights to play. So uh, we will see. We're working on trying to get a connection back there Um, because, as you can imagine, power goes out. Everybody uses their cell phone. And the towers are kind of jammed over there. So we're trying to work on other ways, but we just wanted to provide an update. Uh, thank you for tuning in, tuning into year 11. I mean, we started this thing in, uh, I mean, I, I think it was January of 2012 is, is when we, I started kind of formulating this whole idea and it's uh, now October, 2022. Did I do too many 20s there? I think it was the right amount of 20s. No, you're good. That's Chad. I didn't even give him permission <laughs> to uh, go on. Anyway, that's, uh, do we have any comments here? I guess we uh, can check through there. Is the new stadium going to be ha- able to handle it when football can play there? I, I think so. Um, but I, I this is the second power outage, I believe, um, that we've dealt with this year, if I'm not mistaken. I think there was one at homecoming uh, as well. So, hey, All Sports Club, here's a link to the stream. So, you know what? I'm going to use this as an opportunity, and I'm going to put this comment on on the screen here. And uh, we've been seeing this more and more often as the years have gone by. Now it's everywhere. There are so many... Uh, fake spam, really scam Twitter accounts now out there and Facebook accounts that promote false links like this one here, All Sports Club. Now, I'm about to take it off the screen and block this user, but um, the fact of the matter is they put these fake links out saying that it is a high school game, and they they, they even have, as you saw on that, that one, they used an orange heart, Chad. Used an orange heart. So that's a, a scammer who has done research, enough research to basically uh, know the team colors of White Bear and know that even though it says the horn and we really don't have anything like White Bear Lake related in our our name, they found us. So just keep an eye out. Tell, make sure you tell if like, you know, especially, I I, I was going to say, tell the older folks, but even tell yourself because some of these links are so, uh, convincing again, an orange heart. So, um, just watch out. Tell tell your friends, your family to check their sources when they're clicking on links for for high school uh, sporting events because um, you, you go in there, you click on it, and it says to watch the broadcast, pay one ninety nine, and uh, put your credit card info in, and they just people put it in and. Get scammed and it's sad and I, I hope uh, you know like I said I don't know I can't imagine the re- amount imagine the resources you have to put in and it's not just us it's it's everybody um, it's everybody's getting hit so the UND Fighting Hawks are down one nothing they're they just, they just took a hit everybody's getting hit you know Zach was like oh yeah I'll be on in just a second and I'll I don't know what's going on out there I wonder I have to think I mean. Because imagine you got a few thousand people more than are normally there, and what else are you going to do during a power yeah. outage? You're just going to sit on your phone. So the uh, the Bears, I don't, I, I think it was seven nothing, with like four and a half to go in the uh, in the first quarter. So is there like a is there a, a like a, a time where they have to call it? That's a good question. Can they be there? I mean, they play, they practice at midnight every year. Why not play? Remember Midnight Madness? Yep. That was our first, like, real, real broadcast. Anyway, 
So we, um, oh, here we go. We're going to go over, actually, we're going to go back live to uh, White Bear Stadium. Take it away, uh, if you can hear me, Zach, or you can add yourself to the stream. Is he there? All right, get them on. And I'm going to say bye. And maybe we'll do a Halvey cast sometime. <laughs> but anyway, we'll throw it back. To hey, can you hear us? I think we are. I think we are back. Well, that was shenanigans right there. Uh, the power has been out. Everything just went pitch black. It's kind of thrilling, to be honest, but uh, definitely weird, to say the least. So that back-to-back -back games now. According to Gabe, that that has happened. Yeah, We've had power gone out. Just the last game, homecoming. This happened in the first quarter. I was watching the. There was another broad. There's another site broadcasting, and uh, yeah. Um, so I guess we're we're ready to go again for White Bear football, and uh, play is getting back and ready to go as White Bear Lake. In case everyone forgot, recovered a muffed punt in their uh, in the Osseo zone and is now within oh 10 yards of the end zone. So. White Bear Lake with great field position. They're going to run it up the middle and touchdown, White Bear. Touchdown. Well, first play back. That's how you do it. You get back from a power outage and you score a touchdown. You take a two possession lead. That is absolutely beautiful. Scoring. I don't know. Sean Lipscomb. Lipscomb, there you go. He's been solid and he's going to get another touchdown. How about the two best running backs here, Chris Heim and Keyshawn Lipscomb? Getting TDs here in the run game continues to be solid for White Bear Lake, and Trico will be on for his second point after attempt. Hold snap, it's down, it's blocked. It, was, it did look like a high snap, and Osseo was able to get there. So they get the, the Bears do get the touchdown point after is blocked. And in terms of what we know, I don't know if or in terms of what we know, that's Trichel's third miss of the season for yeah. point after. Can't really blame Trichel on that one. Uh, Osseo got a good push off the line. Someone got their hands up and knocked it down. Sometimes it's just a good special teams play by the other team. And uh, But White Bear, what a way to come back from the powder out power outage. They immediately go right to, they immediately go to a power run game, get a touchdown right up the middle. And uh, now White Bear has to go back on defense. We're gonna get to see them it was a three and out the last time White Bear Lake was out. They, they played absolutely outstanding. Stopped the power run game of Osseo. And now we get to see this Michael Delaney. He's the, he's the leader of the defense. Michael Delaney's uh, defensive uh, team, I guess you could say. Because he's been the superstar for them this year. Yeah, here we go. Defense, last time they were out on the field. They got a three and out. We'll see if maybe Osseo also muffs another uh, kick. As Trichel's kick, this one much farther. It'll get to the 12-yard line, returned by the Orioles, looking for some blocking. There's some room up the middle, still on his feet and going. Trichel, the last man, and he will bring him down. Maybe that's Trichel's first career tackle. Who knows? He usually is on the soccer pitch. They brought him in as a kicker, but excellent return for Osseo. I will say, Zach, the student section went absolutely crazy right there for Trichel when he made that tackle. I know that was not ideal because that was uh, not great kick coverage right there by White Bear, but maybe still a burst of energy anyway for the defense, seeing the the kicker, who's not usually a football player, stepping up and making a play. Andrew Farley with the kickoff return brings it to White Bear Lake's 44-yard line. Great return. A return of over 50-plus yardage in great field position for Asiu. An opportunity to cut the lead down in half, possibly handoff up the middle. And not much there for Osseo as once again, their lead back receiving the handoff. At BJ Ezekiel, not able to get anything going there on the ground. And this is gonna be it. This is where Osseo's offense is gonna run into problems. I know I kind of talked about it earlier, but if, White, but if uh, they can't get any good yardage on White Bear in those first few plays of a drive, it's gonna be really tough for them on third downs to make a stop or to convert it on the first down. It's going to be easy for White Bear to make a stop if it's third and long. I'm muted, but I'm sorry, Zach. White Bear just screwed up your 21st birthday celebration. 
Handoff once again, direct snap to the fullback. White Bear Lake not fooled. They're, dis they're dominating so far the line of scrimmage. And a great tackle once again. It's gonna be third and 10. They haven't been able to move the ball. And that's where the Orioles will go. They're trying to get something on the ground. They haven't attempted a pass yet. It was raining earlier, so the conditions not totally ideal for a passing game, but they're not totally a passing team as well. Hayden Potratz going into running QB. formation again, but I, won't, you, I feel like you have to throw right here if you're Osseo. Third down and nine, or third down and ten, and they can't really run the ball. It's going to be tough. Joseph Ali, the fullback. There's the first pass, and a great catch. I by think he Iggy might be Cooper. a little short. No, uh, it looked no, like he was down. right on the line, and that's the first first down for the Orioles tonight. Beautiful catch there. Looked like a little out in front, had to fully extend, possibly even dangerous. If the DB on the far side for White Bear Lake made a cut, they had possibly an opportunity for a pick. Instead. Great pass for Potratz on his first attempt, and it'll go for 10 on the first down. Well, that's a tough spot for the White Bear corner. One-on-one -on -one coverage, third and long. Can run a few different routes right there. Good throw by Pogratz. And they try to go back to the ground, and White Bear Lake is eating that up right now. Orioles, they rely on it as Ollie gets the direct snap from the fullback position, and once again, he's stuffed. It's a loss of two, and it'll be second and long. And that's been the story. They're, they have. I mean, it's looking like the game script. White Bear Lake is making them or pass the ball. They're loading the box up. They don't even have any high safeties, really. They're all crashed down. They're ready for this run game. Orioles might be having to get creative here and develop something in the passing game. Well, we're also seeing White Bear. They're going to blitz most plays. They're going to, most of the time on regular situations, they're going to see a team just rush four guys after the quarterback, and everyone else is going to kind of play back. White Bear Lake is bringing six, seven guys every play because they know that the run game is the biggest threat. And again, nothing for Osseo's run game right now. Yeah, the defense clearly prepared here. Dustin Holman, defensive coordinator. They saw last game for B.J. Zakiel had an amazing game. I believe he had over 300 yards. He had four touchdowns. I know that. One of them sprung for 65 yards. He is great when he gets to the open field, but the Bears not even allowing any chance. And like you said, loading the box, six, seven guys right up at the line of scrimmage ready to go. And that's, the, that's how you stop a running team. You play guys in the box. And the way to counter that if you're the offense is to throw it. And as we've seen so far, Osseo, you know, they had the one completion, but they do not want to throw the ball. They want to run the ball but that's just not available right now. Two receivers to the left of Poe Tratz, making the completion, but not getting far for Osseo's Devin tackle. Williams. And Gabe sees the flag before I do. Yeah, unfortunately a tackle right there. If you get them right up by the neck at the top of their pads, kind of, yeah, right at their neck level, it's gonna be a collar tackle. And that's not, that's not allowed because that, that's a really, it, it, it hires the risk for an injury on a play, and you don't want to see injuries ever. So great play by White Bear to read it, but got to tackle a little bit lower. And Ryan Bartlett is not happy about it right now. He's, he's giving the refs an earful for it. I wasn't able to catch. Did you catch who it was? The guilty I, party? I did not. I, I no. believe it might have been Delaney, but I'm not totally sure. He's a very aggressive tackler, very physical player. And you know, sometimes that happens. You hit him a little bit higher. Low point, low man wins at the attack. Gotta hit him a little bit lower. Shifting over for Osseo, Antonio Frondren Jr. Once again, they try to go up the middle and once again, the Bears are ready. A gain of nothing. Might have even lost some yard. It looks like a loss of one on the play even. Second and long continues. Passing game? I, I don't know. Uh, Osseo, I would highly consider it. One of them went for a first down, the other one a penalty. They're forcing White Bear Lake into an interesting situation. As yeah, I, I would imagine, I think White or uh, Osseo has to start trying to throw the ball more. I mean, they, I, they haven't run the ball for anything. White Bear Lake is loading the box. They are stuffing them at the line. They're winning the physical battle. If you're Osseo, those quick passes are there. White Bear Lake's corners are playing pretty far off the receivers. 
Because then again, Asya, when they throw the ball, it's in long yardage situations. I think you got to test that. Quick throws, if you're Asio, if you're White Bear on offense, you just keep doing what you're doing. Running the ball is working. Their power game is working exactly how they want. Mix in some passes to keep Asio from just playing up like White Bear is doing to them. But man, so far it's been White Bear Lake has been dominant. The only way asio has been able to move the ball is either on a penalty or, you know, throwing the ball quickly over the middle. Well, the first quarter has officially ended. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to text Bears. As it looks like we also have some extracurricular stuff going on in the student section. Very interesting. Police getting involved, it looks like. Well, when the power goes out, you know, it's, it's not a lot. There's a lot of weird stuff that might happen. You never know. I mean, you can't see what's happening. It didn't seem like anything too bad, though. And, you know, you never know. But... <laughs> Hopefully nothing major as we can get back to football here when Osseo struggling to move the ball, second and 11. I, again, Zach, I, I want to say that they should, that they're going to throw it and they should, but as we've seen, they're choosing to run the ball first and second down every drive. So I guess we'll see. Osseo heading up the line as we are set to start quarter number two. Potrats under center, Ollie behind him in motion and we have flags. I gotta imagine that's a false start on Osseo right there. No, it's against White Bear Lake. Oh, interesting. Might have been a neutral zone infraction. Lined up in the yeah. neutral zone more than likely. Otherwise, I don't know exactly what the call is. Yeah, normally they don't they don't blow the whistle while the after the ball gets snapped unless it's something major and that's normally an offensive penalty, but I guess they saw something on White Bear right away. Well that helps Osseo quite a bit. It'll be second and six. You know, if they wanted to run the ball in second 11, you definitely want to run the ball in second and six. So, again, I'd like to see Asio maybe get a little more aggressive, but. Potratz hands it off and getting a little more chunk of yardage. Devin Williams making it third and manageable for the Orioles as the Orioles now enter the red zone for the first time tonight. 11.45 to go here in the first half. No gain on the play. It'll be... I third guess, and six still. Yeah, third and six. I guess no gain on the play. It looked like there might have been something, but we'll see what the Orioles draw up. Yeah, the Orioles may be a pass coming. We'll see. i got to imagine they'd be thrown. They cannot move the ball on the ground right now. I feel like they've had a total of maybe four yards on the ground on about six run plays this drive. you got to throw it here, I think. Yeah, what set them up was this kick return and a jet sweep over to Williams. Gets a couple of yards, but that's not going to do it at all still three, four yards shy of the first down. We'll see if the kicker has any potential or if they're gonna go for it. It looks like Potratz heads to the sideline getting a play from his head coach. And it's a tough, that's a tough kick with these conditions. A lot of high school kickers don't have a lot of range. They look for a more accurate kicker and this would be about 33 yards, 35 yards from where we're at and these conditions, that'd be really tough. We'll see what Ryan Stockhouse, head coach for the Orioles decides to do is possible possibly a Time jump out. and Orioles all they have is trying to force the Bears off sides it looked like they were almost able to do so but no flags come out of the pockets of any of the referees and we have the first charge timeout to the Osseo Orioles yeah Osseo they're, they're mixing up their run game a little bit and I will say if they're going to run the ball they should keep trying it the way that they did those last few plays before it was just run it right up the middle and try to just win the physical battle now they're having guys go in motion, trying to get White Bear a little off center, and then but they're still handing it up the middle. And I like the jet sweep that they ran, but again, White Bear Lake's defense playing really disciplined, staying on top of that. And again, other than the penalty and that one 10 yard completion, Osseo has not been able to move this football. Yeah, well, Gabe, aside from everything, when did the Bears get these awesome rain jackets the nice warm jackets that you see NFL I've, players wearing. You wish that you had one. White Bear Lakes got them right now. We never had these in our years. We, we did years not, but I'd say that's a good investment, especially considering today waking up with snow on the ground. Oh got to be able to keep your players warm. I know everyone else is mad about that. I love it. I'm, I'm a, I love the cold, but everyone else uh, disagrees with me. Orioles back up to the line in shotgun as Portrats fourth down, takes the snap, looks to his right, fires into the end zone. 
well covered and broken up. No flags for pass interference as it looks like Cooper was the intended target and on the coverage for the Bears, Devin Mueller with the clutch stop for White Bear Lake and it'll be first down, turnover on downs for the Bears and that's a big stop. I don't get the play call right there for Osseo. It's third, it's fourth down and short. I get maybe trying to take the take a deep shot, but you don't do it on fourth and two. You go for something quick over the middle. It's been there. It, the passing over the middle has been there. I don't mind lining up in shotgun. It gives them a different look, but I don't love that play call trying to take a shot to the end zone right there. Snap from Knutson. Pitches it out to Brakes. Brakes still on his feet, able to break one tackle and then Gets swarmed by a couple of jer people in white jerseys. Gain of about three. And it'll be second and seven. Yeah, White Bear, they're, they're trying to get Rayshon Brakes involved. He's such an explosive playmaker, probably their most explosive playmaker last year and this year. Trying to get him involved. He had the fumble earlier. Tough conditions. I like that play, though, that pitch play outside. Asso keeps biting on it. Maybe they can t try something over the middle. Knutson will be in shotgun to his right as Lipscomb. Lipscomb then motions. Looks like they might be switching the play up as Knutson ready to go under center. Lipscomb just a couple yards behind him. And it'll be a direct snap. Knutson and Lipscomb collided for a solid second. It looks like maybe disrupted the momentum of Lipscomb as it's a gain of only a yard. And it'll bring up third and manageable. Third and about five for the Bears. Yeah, this is where you can get creative as a play caller because now this is a, a situation third and four where running the ball has been working, but if you wanted to throw, this is a good situation to throw as White Bear hasn't done that much. They've only had two pass attempts this game. And we've got a quarterback with over 900 passing yards. I think you give him a chance here. Maybe the play they were looking for originally as Knutson.
All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. This is absolutely nuts. That's the second time tonight. Power has gone out. Will a third be? That's pretty much the story of the game now. I mean, it was 13 nothing, two rushing touchdowns. Chris Heim, as well as Keyshawn Lipscomb. Well, one of our commenters, Breezy, has an idea. They think it's the food trucks outside. There is the mini donut truck right now out there, which I'm not gonna lie, looked really good. Did but, you uh, test it out, we might, I did not test guys, it out. Let's go. How much money do we got? And we, we could, do have Joshua we Door can get here all with the us product. on the mic Let's buy now all as the well. product. Let's get this game going. I'm, I could go for some mini donuts personally, and let's just get this game going. And you know, I'm gonna just throw this out here because I don't know if this game's gonna get underway again. But tomorrow is Zach's 21st birthday for everyone this game, watching. At this point, I'm gonna be 21 by the time this game's over <laughs> at this rate, man. This and is you know, Zach. We may need to celebrate to with that. some mini uh, mini <laughs> donuts at the have end a of this party game. In the press box tonight. That is what. <laughs> Uh, oh well, it's good to be gosh. back up here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, the Bears are returning to the field. Osseo back on the field. Brian Pelquin, and it looks like mm -mm. head principal Don Bosch have been communicating, trying to figure this out. But this is nuts. We will presume more than likely if power goes out a third time, the game will be called. That's kind of what we're expecting at this point. If that is to happen, whatnot, we will, as soon as we can get service, we will try to broadcast. Um, we will try to put it out on Twitter, social media, that the game will conclude. Yeah, we... <clears throat> We'll try our best if the power goes out, but right now we're going to have White Bear Lake out on the field on offense. They're going to start with the ball a second time for the power outage. Third down and four. White Bear Lake in the pistol and a timeout. And just so everyone also remembers, that is the second now, so we have switched sides. If anyone has forgotten during all the uh, power outages. And despite the power outage and having a bunch of time to prepare what they wanted to, Osseo takes a timeout. So I'm not really sure what they were discussing during the power outage, but Osseo takes its second time out of the half. And that's another thing. We're only about three minutes into the second quarter right now. And we, this game has technically been going for about an hour. So it's a little bit behind schedule. Yeah, well, Osseo, they might as well use their timeouts while they still can, I guess. I <laughs> <laughs> we hope that it doesn't happen again, but, you know, the, I, tonight's just full of surprises, I guess. What a fun start to the horn season for us here. I don't even remember what it is. Okay, we got third and four on the Bears' 23-yard line. It looks like Knudsen's in the shotgun. We got Lipscomb behind him, or it's pistol formation, excuse me, clock rolling. We've hit nine minutes to go here in the second quarter. And what feels like probably already been an hour is Knudsen will scramble to his left and doesn't get much as he gets hammered. Oh yeah, he's getting up slow after that one. Yeah, he definitely felt that. He is okay, able to get up. However, there is an injured Oriole on the field. And he is struggling to get up, I believe. That is number 32, Caden Crutcher, I believe, is the Oriole down. Not the sight you want to see. And now we will have an even more extended stoppage for at least briefly for an injury. So things now just starting not to go anybody's way. Yeah, you hate to see an injury no matter... No matter what, no matter the level, you hate to see injuries, so. Hopefully uh, nothing too major, but uh, he's, he's looking a little slow to get up. But, man, that's going to be one tough thing tonight that I was thinking about with how, with how cold it is, you know, cramping and stuff, and that could be a problem. Injuries a little bit higher. And then the fact that they have to stand there during these blackouts with really just what they're wearing, unless you know, you're white bear and you have these nice jackets, you're not gonna get warm. So this is really tough on the players' bodies, like physically, just because you know, you're know you used to being warmed up, ready to go, adrenaline's pumping, and then, then you just have to stop. And it's not like a halftime break where you go back to the locker room, you're just stuck on the field in what's really not nice weather right now. It is a little, it is chilly here. Yeah, I mean, body, when you don't get the blood flowing either, muscles can tense up and whatnot. When you're making that hard contact, Things can happen, and that's exactly what it looks like. He is able now 
to be off the field once again. I believe that was Caden Crutcher. Hard to tell, it's either 30. It was either Caden Crutcher or it was Vio Camara. One of the two that went off for the Orioles. We hope he's okay. We hope he can return to action as both teams back in. It's fourth and short. Bears getting ready to punt. Last time Emilio Stanton sent a put, uh, punt excuse me, down the field. It ended up being muffed by the Orioles. Bears were able to recover. We'll see what happens. As it punts up and a fair catch it looks like. And just getting out of the way, not even messing with it this time is Ahmed Bundo. Bundo. And the Bears will down it on their own, th on Osio's 32 yard line. Right there, Osio not taking any chances. The last time White Bear punted, went off the returner's leg and White Bear got the ball in prime field position, took it in and then uh, scored immediately after. Right there, just gets out of the way, takes no chances. Smart play by the returner considering what happened last time. Orioles, last time they had the ball, they were able to get down to the red zone, were not able to convert, went for it on fourth down, a big play at the end. Ended up costing them any sort of possession. Passing game seemed to be what works for them. They're trying to go back on to the run game. And once again, there's no stoppage. However, there is a flag. So we will quick check and see what that call is. It does look like it's a face mask. And I'm more than likely going to assume this is going to go against White Bear Lake once again. Yeah, when you see a bunch of guys hit the running back like that. You know, the, all of them are trying to find their, their piece of flesh to say to grab and bring down the tackler, and sometimes you actually get a hand up high, and that's the second costly penalty by White Bear this game. They've been stuffing the run, and no matter where Osio tries to run the ball, but these little penalties, they can come back to bite you, especially if Osio can find some kind of rhythm on offense. Osio's biggest plays, as you mentioned, have just come off of the personal fouls, 15-yard penalties. That's the second one. Devet. Holman can't be too pleased with that. Anybody on the defensive side of the ball for White Bear Lake. They've been, like you said, Gabe, able to stuff it as Zach Yall. Now able to get a solid run, still going. Multiple people pushing the pile and works his way for an 11, 12 yard pickup. And what a play from BJ Zakiel, who has been shut down this whole game, but this one just great power running, using his first legs, everybody Orioles tackling high, and he drives for a big first down for Osio. That's really the first good run play that Osio I've seen so far from them, and you know, again, that's that's what you that's what they're trying to do. That is their game plan is to run the ball like that. And they finally found some success, but again, they got to mix it up a little bit here. The, the, the run game is just not there. I know they just had a 10 yard carry, but you know, you can't rely on the pile being pushed 10 yards every play right now. Under center and handing it off once again, it's Zakiel. <clears throat> Try to go back to the play that was just recently successful. However, it's stuffed right at the line. Yeah, that's, again, you know, you can push the pile one play for 10 yards, but then the next play, White Bear Lake, they stand up, put, push it back, and halt you at the line of scrimmage. It's, it's really tough for Osio to move the football anywhere on the ground right now. You, again, they gotta try to throwing, throw, try throwing the ball. It has worked for them so far. Quick substitution in as Malik Dumbia is on the field for White Bear Lake. Helmet came off, it looks like for Aiden Aiken. So he will have to step out for a play. We have a flag on Offsides. the field as Williams gets the pitch. And once again, brought down at the line. I'd imagine that's offsides on White Bear, flag thrown right away. Unless it's like a legal formation or something weird like that on the offense, I'd imagine this is offsides. Still awaiting the call from the referee. However, it looks like the ref's talking to Bartlett. Oh, it's it, it is against the offense. It was an illegal shift on, on uh, Asio. Again, one of those weird little penalties. It just means somebody uh, or more than one player was moving when the ball was snapped. Normally they blow it dead right away, but I guess they let him play this time. That's a little odd, but normally they blow that play dead immediately. Bartlett decides to decline as it forces a third and long for Osseo, and 
Why not? The defense has been playing tremendous. The pass game, for the most part, hasn't been effective. We'll see what happens as Hayden Potrots once again under center. This time he'll drop back, look for his receiver. It's caught and just making the tackle. It looked like initially Cooper was going to break away, but making the stop was Dominic Anderson. It's just about a yard shy, maybe two yards shy of the first down. We'll see what Osseo decides to do. It's on White Bear Lakes 37. I think they go for it here. You're kind of in that no man's land territory. It's too close to punt, too far to kick. You've had you had a run play on this drive go for 10 yards, and you just had a pass play go for, I believe, seven or eight yards. I'd like to see them throw it again here. I know they, they're going to try to power run this thing up the middle, but I'd like to see them throw this. Prowitz in the offense heads up early to center. They decide to run it. It's Akil, and he is right at the line. It looks like he's going to be marked short. He's not going to get it. And White Bear Lake with a big stop on fourth down once again. Matt, Orioles now 0 for 2, and the Bears offense will take over. Not bad field position at all. It's going to be at the 36-yard line. It was Michael Delaney. He made first contact that fit their physical leader safety of this team. Made contact at the line, and then about four or five Bears came swarming and pushed the pile back. They're not going to give Osseo that again. I, Zach, this run game is just not there for us. I've said it 30 times already, and I'm going to keep saying it. They need to start trying to throw the ball. They are moving the ball through the air. On pass plays right now for Osseo, they've had two completions that have almost been first downs and a forced penalty. you got to keep going to that. Knudsen will hand off, give it to Lipscomb, goes up center, gains a few yards. He'll be brought down. Wiper Lake also trying to get the run game assessed. They've had a lot better success, especially with Rayshon Brakes on a couple of sweeps. Chris Heim getting in the end zone. Lipscomb as well. A score 13-0 with five minutes and counting to go here in the second quarter. We'll see if we make it to the end of the first half without another power outage. Fingers crossed. So far it's been one a quarter, so we'll see how the rest of the game goes. Hopefully it's maybe not stick to that trend, but timeout by White Bear. Don't exactly know what Bartlett saw, but he didn't like something. And White Bear Lake will use their first timeout with 4.42 to go. Like we said, 13 to nothing. It'll be second and seven when the Bears get back onto the field. And we'll see what Bartlett draws up. I don't mind the timeout right there. White Bear Lake has not really moved the ball well their last few drives. Osseo's defense has been standing up and stopping them. And there looked to be a little bit of a miscommunication between... Um, between Knudsen and his receivers, maybe trying a pass play. So Bartlett, I think, wisely takes a timeout there, get the defense or get the offense reorganized, see what Osseo, maybe adjustments they had made, and now can call a play to, to counter that. Offense and defense heading back out there. We'll see White Bear Lake now down to two timeouts remaining in the first half. As for Osseo, they got one left. So we're already using those timeouts. I think it's going to be a passing play here for White Bear. Shotgun for Mason for Knudsen. He'll drop back as lips going heads up field, stepping into the pocket and being brought down. Huge sack for Deshaun Ricks. The big 6'3", 240-pound senior defensive lineman getting into the backfield, penetrating the offensive line. And a big sack forcing a third and very long for White Bear Lake. Yeah, it's a shame it, if Knudsen would have had even a split second longer in the pocket. Rayshon Brakes was about to be wide open on his crossing route, but good pass rush by Osseo. You know, we're seeing this defense right now really step up. The first drive looked like it was me all white bear. They're making some big plays right now for Osseo. Pistol formation for White Bear Lake. Two receivers set aside and they're gonna set up the screen for Henderson. He's been quiet all night. He's got, he's, he's breaking free, going down 30. Henderson racing, will he get there? Big brought down, just shy. Great pursuit from Tamisen Donato who saves a touchdown, but great screen blockers out in front. Vitel Henderson, I mean, he was going quicker than I could even say any of the yard lines. I was having to process quick. What a play from White Bear Lake, first and goal once again. That was an outstanding play call by Way Bear. I know you guys can't see Zach Chapman boot, but he was jumping up and down like crazy right there. That was hilarious. He just but, almost um, pushed me in the face. He did almost hit Josh as well. But that was a great play call by White Bear. Everyone was expecting a deep ball. White Bear Lake goes with a quick screen, 
great blocking by the offensive line. They got upfield into those linebackers, and Henderson didn't get touched until the safety brought him down. Great play call. Now I expect that power run game on the goal line, and they're going to try to punch it in here. They've got a big body set. White Bear Lake does as they give the ball off, but nothing is able to happen. We don't have the number for who is in the backfield for White Bear Lake, but number 74, whoever that is, trying to make the block for what looked like Lipscomb, but we've got no gain and it'll be second down. I've always thought about that, especially in the NFL too. When you're on the goal line, when you get that close, put extra linemen, those extra big guys in the game to give you that push right up the line. And if you run into that pile where the running back gets stuffed, those big strong guys are gonna push that pocket, or push, not the pocket, push that pile forwards Especially on the goal line here, that could be the difference between a touchdown or stopped at the one. Well, it looked like something the Gophers might even do. They've done that a few times this year, and it's worked. In motion, and a jet sweep pitch over to Rayshon Brakes, who is inching closer to the goal line. I believe he stopped at the two-yard line. It'll be third and a long two yards for White Bear Lake. This is four-down territory for White Bear. If you're gonna, I think they're going to run the ball up the middle here. You know, third down and three. If you get a yard or two, I think you go for it again on fourth down. Your defense has been so amazing this game. They've been stopping Osseo. I think if you don't get the touchdown here and you get positive yards, though, I think you got to go for it on fourth down. Go for the touchdown and know that your defense has been able to make stops the whole game late in the quarter. Ball is placed on the three-yard line. Third and goal. Knudsen under center. Sends a man in motion. Fakes the handoff, pressure up in front. Knudsen avoids one sack, throws it up for grabs, oh. pitched and almost making the catch. White Bear Lake, that was Travis Domshot who was in the back of the end zone. Pass was deflected and he was almost there for it, just ended up behind him. But crazy play, Knudsen just kind of threw it up for grabs. Probably a dangerous play, something you don't really want to see your quarterback do. Almost worked out, but... Instead, we have fourth and short for White Bear Lake. I like the play call there. Osseo's expecting a run play. You run a nice little play action, bootleg play. Gets your quarterback in motion. I think they're going to send the kick you now. That makes sense for third down, for uh, fourth down and three. But I like the aggressiveness there to throw the ball. Everyone's expecting run. Osseo just played very disciplined. They, their corners stayed with their guys. They didn't try to cheat on the run play. That's good discipline right there, as we could see Togner now attempt another kick, or Trichel attempt another kick. Trichel two for two on the year. 34 is his longest he's made. This is within range. He's also made a 28 yard kick as well earlier in the year. I think it was actually last week he made the 28 yarder. I don't see what the penalty was for. There was a flag thrown, but. Timeout, White Bear Lake. It'll be a timeout and. I wonder if it was gonna be delay of game and they decided to take a timeout instead. Or maybe, uh... Maybe Ryan Bartlett is think, maybe second guessing because it is, with how close the field goes, it is kind of a weird angle from the hash marks. You see a lot of kickers, especially in college, overcorrect and kick it too far to the left or not enough and it goes off the upright. You know, I think Trichel's got a real, I think he's a really good kicker with that soccer background. I don't think that'll be a problem for him, but we'll see. Osseo now heading back onto the pitch. White Bear Lake getting ready. Off the right hash, it looks like it'll be the attempt for Trichel. Gavin Knutson, the holder. Long snapper for the Bears. Eli Leaflad. Kick is up. Good. And it's good. So three for three so far on the year for Eli Trichel. First season and last season as kicker as he's a graduating senior, but a big field goal putting the Bears up 16 to nothing and making it still a two possession game, but you'd have to put up eight points on each possession of your Osseo. If you're White Bear right now, you're feeling really good. You know, offense has had a few little mishaps, but overall they've been really good. Defense, you can't ask for anything better right now from White Bear's defense. Maybe a few penalties that you don't like, but more, but this defense has been terrific. Zero points. I don't think Osseo's gotten past the 30 yard line of White Bear. You know, White Bear, a lot going right for them. Offensively, have a few little things to clean up. Maybe, you know, try to try to call some pass plays, get, uh, get Knutson going a little bit. They've been a little bit stale, but, you know, going into halftime, you know, assuming they don't give anything up, which, you know, you never know, but if they make a big stop here against Osseo at the end of the half, they should feel really good about this going in. 
Bears should feel good indeed. Great defensive performance. Offense has been nothing but productive as well. Only two punts so far. And one of them ended up working in the favor of that it muffed. It led to a touchdown for the Bears. Taking advantage off the turnover, which is still the lone turnover in this game so far is Trico. Sends the ball on his way near towards the 30 and receiving it and maybe getting a yard or two on his return. A little pooch kick again, trying maybe to, to catch that guy off guard. You know, if he doesn't take a fair catch or if he muffs it, trying to get the ball in good field position. Again, no problem with that. This level in high school, that's worked a few times for White Bear this year, and especially in high school where kickers don't quite have the strongest legs to get it to the other end zone. I like that idea. And plus, it seems like Trichel is really good at those little pooch kicks, getting really good spin on it, making it tough to catch. Yeah, not much room to work with for Iggy Cooper. Just tried to bounce around, see if he could get any blocks. Instead, the Bears swarm him. And we have got first and 10 for the Bears on, or for, excuse me, for the Orioles on their own 32. Potrats under center, takes the snap, drops back, fires, looking in that direction again. Well, that's going to be an injured player, I think, for Osio. He took a number 14 for Osio, took a big hit on the play. Yeah, big collision. He's getting up, but ooh, he's he's getting off the field a little gingerly. His helmet got knocked off. That's what I've wanted Osio to do, though. Quick strike over the middle, but White Bears uh, corners and uh, safety stepped up in a big way, made a nice nice play on the ball. If you're Osio, though, I think you you try that maybe something like that again. They have not been able to run the ball, and especially in this situation, got to try something through the air again. Cooper, the intended target, he'll head off. Helmet came off and maybe to get checked on as well. It was Devin Mueller who came in and made hard contact as they will hand off once again to Zach Heel, who's still on his feet driving. That's the second time he's been able to push the pile. Not as far, but still not a bad game on second down. It'll bring up third and a lot more manageable than usual. About third and four coming up for Osseo. Yeah, and that clock is winding down right now. Osseo not in much of a hurry. I think they're just playing the clock game right now. I don't I don't know that they're really they're really going for points. It seems like they're just trying to make sure they get out of this half at a six down by sixteen. Maybe they'll try a little deep shot right here or something through the air, but it doesn't look like they're playing with much urgency. Yeah, it looks like they're playing more conservative, making sure there's no turnovers. Once again it's a keel with the handoff pushing and getting the first down. And I'll stop the clock momentarily at 32 and a half seconds. It'll be first and 10 for the Orioles on their own 44 yard line. It'll be interesting to see if they decide to take any shots now. And Osseo does take a timeout. Talk things over. I believe that's their last timeout of the half. And we'll see what gets drawn up here after the short break. Yeah, and with the, with the clock stoppage, and they take their timeout, 32 seconds, I'd imagine Osseo, it's, they're just going to try to throw the ball right now. Because, you know, if you punt it, White Bear Lake, you know, with how much time would be left, it'd only be maybe 5 to 10 seconds for White Bear, and can't do a lot if you're past midfield. So I'd imagine that we're going to see Osseo try to air it out a little bit here and, and go for some points, you know. And I, think, I know I, I just said that I thought they were going to play conservative, but I think maybe now that they got the first down, they'll try something different. And I think they're going to have to get to at least a 20-yard line for them to take a field goal tonight. Watching them early and practicing, kicking for both teams kind of struggled on the field goal. but Really tough conditions to kick in tonight. Like, Josh, I know you being a soccer player, you can attest, this is not an ideal condition for any kicker, especially when they're not moving as much. They're probably a little cold going out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so for any of you, those wondering who that new voice is, that's Josh Story. He's running the camera tonight. Added commentary as well. We also have Jake to my far left. He's been running graphics and whatnot, doing a great job producing tonight. As the ball from Prowitz, or excuse me, Portrats, incomplete. Perfect coverage by uh, Dominic Anderson right there. Turned his head. Played the ball, or actually played more of the receiver. Wasn't really going for the ball, just making sure the receiver's hands couldn't make a make a quick play on that.
Well, confusion up here in the press box. I don't know exactly what's going on, Gabe. The receiver did the arm motion to keep the clock moving. The clock operator saw that and thought that he wanted the clock moving, but there should have the clock should have been have been stopped. Oh. Now there's confusion trying to figure out how much time should be should be left right now. I believe it was 27 seconds. That sounds right. And I know the Osseo coaches to the left were were not happy. Oh, Wiper Lake coaches look like they're confused as well. And 26 they, yeah. and a half. So, oh, like Josh far, said, right? about 27. Well, I got that out of the mix. A little clock confusion. 26 and a half seconds. Potrat's under center. Takes the snap, drops back, fires to his right, going to his favorite target so far, Cooper. It's going to be pass interference on White Bear right there. That's And that's the right call. Cooper was going on his slant route. White Bear's corner stopped as he was uh, making that cut in his route, slowed him up. That's the right call. That's pass interference on White Bear. Iggy Cooper, the only one checked in as a receiver. They go on one wide receiver set is what it looks like here on the roster. They go three running backs. So usually they got Devin Williams, B.J. Zakiel, and Joseph Ali. And, yeah, pass interference is the call. That'll put the ball on the Bears' 41. 23.1 seconds. Now you got some more opportunities for a shot. However, Osseo, they, okay, so they do still have a timeout remaining. They did not use one earlier, so I don't know what that other stop White Bear was. Lake has, a, has one timeout. Osseo does not at this time. There's another deep shot here. Going back to Cooper in the air jump. They're going to say he got a foot oh, down. Wow. wow. Very impressive catch. I mean, to me, that didn't look like a completion, that, but that's that a like really impressive catch. That looked like the defender shoved him out. It looked like... Anderson was able to force him out of bounds. Instead, it's first down at the 23-yard yeah, line, 24-yard line. That's a really nice catch right there by Cooper. 17.4 seconds to go. I see why he's the number one target for this Osseo offense. That's a tremendous, that's a tremendous catch. And he got out of bounds, so the clock stops as well. That's a, that's a really impressive play by Osseo. Yeah, I mean, this sets things up greatly for Osseo now. They have a lot more open in the playbook. Fake the handoff to Zakiel. Pressure up the middle. Scrambling and getting sacked. Big play and just bulldozing Chris Heim. Why did the clock stop? Clock stops at 6.7 seconds. And believe we have a timeout. And I believe coaches on White Bear Lake side wondering why the clock stopped. Yeah, I don't know why the clock stopped right there. They're Nobody's deeper than any of our Osseo did not have any timeouts. Maybe did White Bear Lake take a timeout? Oh yeah, White Bear Lake took theirs. Oh, scoreboard confusion. It looks like two of the timeouts are, they added one to White Bear Lake, I don't know. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused right now, but uh, nonetheless a timeout taken on the field, but right there, that's a that's a that's not a great play right there by the quarterback for Osseo. In that situation, you gotta throw that ball away. Nothing's there. You can't try to scramble because there's no time left. You just got to throw that ball away, but he tries to make something happen with his legs, and, and then he gives up a sack, and they have to take a timeout. That's, you know, that's part of just being an inexperienced quarterback. You see that a lot in high school. Even in college, you see that a lot, too, with a lot of, the, with a lot of quarterbacks. That's a really tough thing to learn while you're in a game situation like that. So I get that, but he's got to know to throw that ball away sometimes. Yeah, I mean, he had heavy pressure to – as Tolu Ukunle got up there, forced the pressure, forced him out wide, and here goes Potratz again looking for Henderson. It's picked up. There's flags, though. It looked like clear pass interference from my angle. That should be first down Cooper, excuse me, not Henderson, Cooper. Henderson, 14 for the Bears side for the black and orange, and on the white and black, it's Iggy Cooper, and it's just Poltratz going to Cooper. They even double covered this him this time, and I believe it's Anderson who's the guilty party with .8 seconds to go. And this penalty will get him close to within the, the 10. 20-yard line. Uh, to the 20. Ooh, I think you're tempted for, for the field goal. I know it's about a 33-yard kick in really tough conditions tonight, but. You got a score I, here. Yeah, I think you need points. I mean, it point looks like they seconds, might be taking a shot to the end zone, though. Point eight seconds. This is the last play of the first half. Yes. 
They're going to take a shot to the end zone here. They are going for the touchdown. They're lined up in a tight formation. I don't get that. It's going to be Bryce Hawthorne who lines up behind Potratz, drops back, firing, and almost Bad. picked off. It wouldn't matter as the ball was well underthrown. A target was Sawyer Nelson. And the Bears end up making the crucial stop, bringing us to the end of the first half successfully without any power outage for the third time. 16-0 the score here. Gabe, your thoughts? You know, thoughts. You know it, it was a good first half for White Bear. Despite the weird power outages, they managed to stay, to stay uh, on top of their offense, keep a rhythm going. And defensively, they have been as, as good as you can be. Giving up zero points, few rough penalties is, I think, the way to say it. You know, some penalties that are, are definitely coachable, and at halftime you'd say, hey, you know, on that play when Cooper's going up for the ball, don't hit him until, you know, the ball gets there. And he's, it's, it's jump balls, and that's where they've been drawing those pass interference calls. Cooper clearly the most uh, dominant receiver for Osseo, but... This has been as good of a half for White Bears as you could ask for. They've been moving the ball very effectively on offense. Defensively, they've been as close to perfect as you can be. And if you're White Bear, your, your message at halftime is, hey, keep the same thing going, keep the physical, physicality high, stay tough, and keep that, keep that run game go going. White Bear Lake effective yeah, first half, right now, putting up 16 points through 24 long. minutes. They're able to get the job done so far. We will step aside and take a break as tonight we've got the halftime class being announced for White Bear Lake. We will return shortly, give a little more analysis on that first half, what to look forward to in the second half. Stay tuned. You are watching the Bears versus the Oilers. Oh, my goodness. The Orioles. Orioles. I cannot speak. The Orioles here on the horn.
Welcome back to the horn. Getting ready to start the second half. We got a minute before the horn blows. White Bear Lake making their way back to the field. Osseo still to be found, I guess, but they'll be back out shortly, we would assume. Gabe, we'll recoup first half again, a little more inside, but also we'll, what do you expect here with the Bears' second half? What do you think they need to do to continue to be on pace to pick up win number five, head to five and two on the season and that before they head uh, on Wednesday against Totino Grace, possibly end six and two heading into the postseason. That would be nice to see from Wiper Lake. But what do you think the, the Bears need to do to lock in second half? Um, and what do you think to build off of that first half? Um, well, I think uh, the defense, if you're um, Dustin Hol Coach Holman, you're saying just do the same thing second in the second half. Maybe limit the penalties, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna hit somebody hard, hit them clean, don't go, you know, don't hit them high, hit them low. But they have been absolutely terrific defensively, so um, Holman, I'm, I'd be willing to bet he's just saying defense, keep playing physical, keep playing tough. We're winning the line of scrimmage. We're stopping the run when they're when they're playing when they're uh, throwing. Wait for the receiver. Wait until you see the ball. Be patient. When you know uh, the quarterback, he's not throwing it very hard. It's a very much a lob. The ball is, hangs up in the air for a minute. That's how they're drawing those pass interferences or how Osio is. So if you're a white bear, you just say be patient on the ball. Wait till you see it hit his hands, and then make a play on the ball. Don't try to make a play before the ball gets there and take a penalty. Offensively, it's play physical, pound the ball, run the ball really hard at uh, Osseo. That is how White Bear Lake starts their offense. That burns down the clock, and that gets defense tired. And that gives the White Bear defense time to make adjustments on the sideline, play tough, play physical. That's really what I think White Bear, that when it boils down to. Just play tough, play physical, stop the run defensively, and run the ball well offensively. That's what the keys are, basically. Well, we'll see what happens if they are able to. If they are also able to hang on, I don't know if you know this, but they are undefeated at home currently, 3-0. and You think home field advantage is a real a real thing here? Do you think Coach Bartlett, do you think they play better? you think, what is the scheme behind it? They're 2-2 two and two on the road. Well, just remember, Zach, we are broadcasting right now, and there is a thing called the broadcaster's curse. I've seen it a lot of times with NFL announcers, and you just said White Bear Lake has not lost at home. That just got me worried. My birthday Josh, what do you will want to cancel say? that out. Josh, what do you but want to I say? would say White Bear has a secret weapon, and it's the power outage. They have yes, trained for this they have. for two games now, They've and they experience. have it in their back pocket. Yeah, they were ready. They were ready when that power outage happened. I don't think that played much in the, the factor as the offense slowed down after that. But yeah, Josh, <laughs> you could be onto something. The power outage could be their secret weapon. <laughs> Bears, if they are able to hang on, they'd be three and zero at home. They'd advance to four and one on the conference, like we said earlier. Five and two. Osio returning to the field. Somewhat there they are, returning to the opposite side of the field. We are ready to go at this point. Whenever Bears looking to hold down the fort defensively, Knudsen he's been solid when need to be, but really Rashawn breaks too. He's been great. The jet sweeps have been great. Both Chris Heim, he's had some great things, but Lipscomb, especially in the run game, has been excellent. That screen, too. Do you think they're going to have any more screens like that where they had the Vital Henderson, where that went for f over 50 yards? Oh, down absolutely. The they, they, you got to bring that play call. Well, depending on how, if this game gets closer, if the offense starts getting held strong, I think you got to try that again. Or maybe they have another play built in that kind of fakes that screen and does something else. Because you know if they call that screening, and Osseo's going to be ready for that. But if there's another type of play that they could call to give that same look, but not throw the screen, that could totally catch Osseo off guard in the second half. Or even for future teams, you know, use that screen now, knowing that teams will see that on film, and maybe in the future develop something else that counters that. You know, it's it's a, it was a terrific play call, and that play again went for crazy yards. But I expect White Bear maybe to just keep it simple for the second half for the offense with how good their defense has been. Keep it simple offensively. Just burn the clock and, uh, you know, chip away long drives. You know, if you can get, you know, 12, you know, 13 play drives that go, you know, five, six minutes and burn that clock down and end it with a touchdown, that's perfect for White Bear. That's exactly what they would like to do the second half. So do you think, too, White Bear Lake, their defense, they've been shutting down Osseo. Do you think this second half the Bears go really run heavy, just try to milk clock right away? Do you think they maybe wait till the fourth half, have a balanced attack? What do you 
What do you think? Because, I mean, both aspects have been good. I think they've struggled more in the passing game. Oh, sure. Offensive pass blocking, it's almost like the opposite of the Vikings looking at them. The, the pass blocking on the Vikings, amazing. And then run blocking, yeah, it's iffy. But, you know, they on here for the Bears, they, run blocking, you've seen it. They've been able to move the ball constantly down the field. Passing, they've given up quite a few pressures to Knutson. He's taken a sack or two. A lot of it has to do with just the experience of a high school um, a high school player. You know, a lot of linemen, it's a lot easier for a line, for anyone to go forward rather than step back. And when you're pass blocking, you're moving backwards, trying to wall them off, trying to wall that guy off. But when it's a... Uh, but when it's a run play, you just get to run straight ahead and you get to just try to outmuscle that guy in front of you. And when you're facing, and when White Bear has a very tough physical offensive line like they do, that was the one thing my uncle Coach Bartlett told me is he said his offensive line loves the run game because they get to be physical, they get to go right at the other team, they love that. So I, I would expect them to run the ball a lot. They've been way more effective on the ground. You know, keep with the sweeps and stuff to give breaks the ball too, but I expect them to power run the, the ball against Asya the second half. And we are underway from the second half as Trichel with the kick, and I believe Asio was expecting it to go out of bounds in a horrific return. However, oh, there's another penalty. face mask on the play, but I mean, that play did not look pretty whatsoever. Ahmed Bundo, had, who, who's also been struggling too in the return, I believe he thought it was gonna go out of bounds, maybe get to the 40 yard line or so. That was the play against Anoka on homecoming that they did that same pooch kick and that ball went back. And the player for um, Anoka did not go for the ball. He left it and White Bear Lake picked it up and that makes it their ball. So I would, ex it's gonna be, yeah, face mask by White Bear. But that play, you know, heads up play by Osio to pick up the ball and not just leave it, let, it, let it go. Cause otherwise White Bear Lake could have gotten the football right there. And watch the Oppenheimers. Oh, here we go. Hand up off the middle. It's Zakio. And Potrats once again just handing it off. They love to shoot those A and B gaps. Yeah, the, those A and B gaps, which are the two gaps right up the middle to the left and right side of the center. Again, I, I said it so many times in the first half, and if I would have said it during halftime, if we would have done something for Osio throw the ball they have been so effective through the air they've completed a majority of their passes and a few of them have been pass uh, interference on white bear they've been able to move the ball through the air i think you got to try that right now if you're osseo which is what they're doing pass and once again it's cooper with the reception and making the stop right away was bennett gilson i haven't said his name at all tonight there he goes making a crucial tackle but once again they look to that right side for their star receiver right now. It's Icky Cooper. It's the guy that Potratz continues to trust. Third and short, third and one, maybe third and inches coming up, but possibly another big stop here for White Bear Lake. Yeah, he's been getting open. Go go to him if he's open and oh, they get White Bear to jump. Great, nice hard count right there by Osseo. Well, that's, that's the main fault for White Bear Lake tonight. Penalties have been costly for them. That's got to be number five or six already that I can think of. But the personal fouls, that's the second or third offsides. I mean, if you're Coach Bartlett, you've got to be livid. I mean, that's definitely something. It's a discipline issue. Something that you'll probably address at the break. I mean, they probably address it at the break, too. Oh, I'm sure. And it's not just the like the amount of penalties they've had. It's been the situations that they've taken penalties in third down and one a third down where they had to get a stop. I think they had one on a fourth down too. Pass once again to Cooper and Potratz makes outstanding great catch. play. I believe it was Chris Heim on coverage and it looked like possibly Anderson as well. And Cooper once again, getting the targets, getting the looks and making the play. As Anderson coming off the field, more than likely it was him who got beat, but what do you think Wiper Lake's got to do here, Gabe, to really eliminate that? Because they're going to Cooper. Well, the constantly. thing is with Cooper is it's the same play. It's just that fade route towards the sideline, and he, they're throwing it up in a jump ball. If you're White Bear, you got to have a safety over there maybe. If you Maybe Delaney. Have him go over there where uh, they're going to throw it. Have him run straight to that sideline. You know where that throw is going to go. Zakiel getting a positive gain. One that just doesn't get stopped at the line. 
Well, and this is part of the thing with that ability to throw the ball. Like Asu has had so far this game, is that run game is going to open up White Bear. They can't play six or seven guys right on the line of scrimmage. They have to have a safety or a linebacker back a little bit in case they throw the ball to Cooper, who's been absolutely tremendous this game. Zakiel's carry goes for six. And the... It'll be another handoff, and this one stuffed at the line once again, and we have yet another penalty marker. Illegal on the shift. Field. Illegal shift on uh, Asio. Again, that means two guys were moving right when the ball was snapped. You can only have one that's moving, and he has to and he has to be set as well. He can't be moving right when that ball gets snapped. That's the second time where one of the receivers has come in motion for Asio, and he keeps his feet moving when that ball is snapped. Well, that hurts Osseo as it pushes it to second and nine. Osseo will see what they develop. More than likely, another run. Zakiel, the main guy that they trust, trying to get him to break loose, get some big play like he had last week against Eastridge. He lines up in the back, about five yards behind. This time it's a drop back. They look towards Cooper again, and another completion and another stop for Gilson, and it'll be third and manageable once again for Osseo, who once again finding Iggy Cooper along the sideline, and they, they put themselves in a good opportunity here. That time, though, instead of continuing to go upfield like he has been most time on those jump balls, he stopped on a dime, and that, that uh, froze the white bear corner. Great timing throw by Osseo. Gets good, uh, good yardage, third down and three. I, I'd love to see them throw the ball here again. It's been working, but I think they're going to run it. Botrats and the whole line rushes up, and the Bears once again almost jumped. Falling for that hard count of Potrats. I wonder how effective it is. You can't hear it from up here in the booth as they hand it off to Zakiel, and he pounds his way for what should be a first down. He's really close if he doesn't have it. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, they, he is on the marker, and they are signaling to move the chains. Fresh set of down on the Bears 42, or excuse me, the 37-yard line. This has been a really impressive drive so far by Osseo. They're keeping White Bear on their toes. They're going to that power game where they're starting to pick up some momentum. They're starting to get three, four-yard carries instead of before, which was zero to one yard. And then if White Bear Lake starts cheating up for those run run plays, they're throwing it outside to Cooper, who I think has been open on pretty much every single play this drive that they've tried to throw it. Yeah, they've got Gilson on him now. It used to be Anderson, but Gilson on that far side looking for Cooper again. What a snag wow. in the air. And it looked like Delaney, I think he thought he had an interception there. Cooper making the grab. Potratch with a great throw, too, in traffic. He threw that on a dime right there. Again, we've seen uh, Potrat start to kick off. Zach Potrat, he normally kind of floats it a little bit more, gets a little air under. That was a dart. And Delaney, I thought he jumped that perfectly, but Cooper just snatched it right out from out in front of uh, Delaney. And man, that's a great play by Osseo. That's an amazing catch by Cooper. Under seven minutes to go here in quarter number three. Looks like killing the play is Potrat setting something up. They've got another back, it's Williamson and Zakiel. Gaining a few more yards as clock continues to wind down this third quarter. Going by pretty quickly here as we are nearing the halfway mark, but Osseo marching, it is a two possession game, so how big game would this score be for the uh, Orioles? Oh, this would be, this is exactly how they wanted to have this drive going. If they end it with a touchdown and a two point conversion, it will literally be the perfect first drive for them. They're taking time off the clock, wearing down that White Bear defense, and they're mixing up their play calls, which is what I wanted them to do in the first half, and they're doing it now. If you're White Bear uh, defensively, now you have to make adjustments on the fly. You gotta hope that White Bear's offense is gonna take time off the clock too and give them time to make some adjustments. Cooper, the only receiver out wide as whistles blow and timeout. might have a timeout. It looks like timeout, Osseo. head coach Ryan Stockhouse is pointing in the direction of the Bears, maybe wondering if there's a penalty or an offsides, maybe asking no. for one. But nonetheless, the refs give him a timeout. No flags thrown. 5.49 to go here in a 16 to nothing game. However, the Osseo Orioles marching down the field here. They've got a positive drive going. Cooper making big plays again. It's been Cooper tonight. Zakiel's been their main man overall. He had a great game 
close to, I believe, over 300 yards rushing last game. Boy, if he did, he had four touchdowns. Can't emphasize that enough. Run game's been stopped by White Bear Lake, but it is crunch time. It's clutch time for these defenders as the Orioles just 12 yards out from getting a score possibly on the board here. Well, it was clear what the what the game plan was for White Bear. Stop the run, stop the run, stop the run, which is what they've more or less have been doing. But great adjustment by Osio to turn to that passing game a little bit more. It's starting to show a little bit of discipline issues, like you said earlier, Zach, with White Bear's defense. They've been so focused on stopping the run, they're really struggling to, to stop Cooper whenever he, uh, whenever he goes on a route. Potratz, shotgun formation. New. Taking the snap, looking to his right and making the grab. After gaining a few yards, I can't tell if it's Cooper. Uh, it, it was. <laughs> no, yep. that was not oh, it was Cooper. Not. That is LaShawn Madden making his first grab wow. of the night. And is that I've, the first catch for someone for Oscar that's not named Cooper? No, there was one other play. Wow. I'm trying to remember. Um, Cooper has been the man this drive oh, for them as a receiver. So. I think it might have been Andrew Farley. or so. uh, There was one other catch earlier, but everything else has been to Cooper. I think this might go to Cooper here if they don't run it. Zakiel in motion. They're going to give him the sweep. Oh, what and a And staying hit. on his feet. Big collision, but staying on his feet, getting close to the first oh, down with Zakiel. We'll see if they give it to him. It would be a first and goal if they do as we have hit the five-minute mark. They have taken seven minutes off the clock this drive. That is amazing. But Michael Delaney right there, the leader of the team, he came in for a big hit. I thought he, I thought he ran over Ezekiel, but he ended up breaking the tackle. But fourth down, I, this, is a tough, this is a tough situation, I think, because Osio's game is that power run, run it up the middle. But they've moved the ball so much better through the air. I wonder here if they'll take a shot for the end zone, but it looks like they might try to power it up the middle. Switching the play up, Cooper out wide to the right. Potritz looking for a QB sneak. I think he got it. It was fourth and short, trying to make it first and goal. Refs, Ooh, I believe, are giving him, well, it might not be that generous of a yep, spot. Yep, they got it. But a big sneak for Hayden Potratz first. Carry of the game, gaining the one yard first necessary. Down, first and goal, and this long drive continues for the Orioles. Four this down territory. It's been clear that they've made it in the amount of time they're milking it. How important is this drive for Osio? Osio's, they're doing everything right this drive. They're doing exactly what they want to. Cooper here lined up on our side, Zach, not that far side like he normally is. It's a keel in motion. They're going to jet sweep to the near side here, but Delaney reading that perfectly and throwing him to the ground, making a big stop and forcing second and goal. <laughs> a little bit of frustration there by Delaney. He's had a few plays this game where he uh, he couldn't quite make the tackle. Normally, something he is be normally something he's very good at. Right there, he just throws uh, Ezekiel down. He was ready for that play, but right here, you know, second down and nine. I I. I think Osio might throw this here because run game's not working inside or outside. Passing game's not working, you're in the red zone. I think you go for the end zone right here if you're Osio. Take a shot, try to generate something. Loss of three on the play for the Orioles. Snap back, you're getting there. There is a flag. We'll see what the flag is, but just boosting up very quickly. No pressure was Nick Asper. It's on the, the, on the nose D. tackle. That's been a common thing this game. I've, I've seen Podrets, although he's been comfortable at good throws, he's gotten hit on almost every pass play, holding on the offense. Wow, that's that's really poor pass blocking right there. Would you accept or would you decline this penalty if you're Coach Bartlett? I would accept it. Make it second down and 20. Make it make it a long ways and uh, force the uh, force the offense to go 20 yards on uh, on three plays rather than nine yards on two plays. I'd, I'd like the odds on second and 20 more than third and nine, personally. Well, they've got a new back in the game, Bryce Hawthorne. They've been lining up at running back. Now different, Zakiel, they've been having jet motions and whatnot. It's been effective still so far, as we mentioned, 3.39 to go. 
Yeah, this is confusing. What is taking this so long, though? Bartlett and the ref are still communicating down there on the field. I Looks like Bartlett getting some questions answered to how this penalty would affect or whatnot, but at the same time, I don't know how complicated this could be. I think they need to make a decision before we lose power again. Though. They are going to decline the penalty, so my uncle disagrees with me. That might come up on Christmas this year. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, but... No, I, I don't. I get the decision both ways. Either, you know, your defense has played really well so far, maybe not so great this drive. Force them to go nine yards on two plays. I would have personally accepted it, but I understand the call. That's going to be a false start, and it works out for him, anyways. Movement. I believe that's the right guard, right tackle for Osseo. He knew it the minute he did it as well. He put his hand right on his face, and that's never a good sign. So. Smart decline there by Coach Bartlett because now instead of second and 20, you know, it's third and 15. So that's uh, that's really tough for, uh, or third and 20. Now it's third and 20, my mistake. Amosua, the guilty party, and yeah, third and 20 now. So it would have been second and 25 before, my mistake. So Long ways to go here. More than likely two down territory for the Oreo Patriots. Looking to his right, looking for Williams in the air. Miscommunication, Williams was cutting inside, maybe on a post route. Looked like he was looking for a flag route or an outside fade and racing for it, but not able to get there was Mueller, who's looking for the interception, but fourth and a mile at this point here for the Orioles. And I, I think you go for the end zone. I think you put Cooper isolated outside, and if he gets double covered, you look to someone else, but if he's one-on-one -on -one outside, I think you throw it up for Cooper here. He's been so dynamic on this drive. And I have a feeling that's what they're doing. He's going out wide to the far side here. I'd imagine we're going to see Coop, uh, target here to Cooper, number 14 for Osseo. Potratz, shotgun, two receivers to the right. Yep, there He's it is. He's looking that way, up in the air, and it's broken up. Cooper slams his fist on the ground, maybe wanting a penalty. That was a... Rayshon breaks on the coverage. The star receiver for White Bear Lake making the pass break up. Had his back turn. Maybe some contact, but threw his hand up. No flags. And another turnover on downs. And fourth downs continue to be a problem here for Osseo. That drive completely backfired on Osseo. They took nine minutes and ten seconds off the clock. There's only 250 left in this quarter. And they couldn't get any points as now White Bear Lake gets to run the ball, work that clock. And so if you're Osseo, what was gonna be a great drive where you took a lot of time off the clock, you wore down the defense, and then hopefully ended with a touchdown, now ends with you just burning clock, which helps White Bear at this point. Two and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. White Bear Lake, as you mentioned, Gabe, they'll take it as clock continues to wind down. Two possession game, but Bears, if they can get some points on this drive, or even the next drive, that would be crucial as I mean depending on how these drives go there might not be too many left especially if Osseo has long drives like that going in center Knutes and then handing it off breaks loses it able to regain it and maybe get back to the original line of scrimmage but it looked like another timing issue which that play is it was there odd. That play was there, so what it was, it was a fake reverse. They had another receiver go behind um, Knutson. He faked the handoff and then pitched it, or either, I didn't see if it was a pitch or just a straight handoff to Brakes, cutting back the other way. The whole defense was moving one way, Brakes was moving the other way. And as he was switching hands to hold the football to protect it better, he dropped it. Oh, that would have been a big pickup for White Bear, but instead now third and third and seven is still, you know, that's a that's a that's that's something you can uh, you can convert, but. It's been tough for White Bear to pick up big chunks of yardage this game so far. Lipscomb to the right of Knutson. Knutson takes the snap, drops back, looking pressure and throws oh. it. That incomplete. No flags. I surprised. There's no intentional grounding. I think Vital he was out Henderson. of the tackle box. Vital Henderson could be identified as the receiver in the area i believe that's who he was intending to go to to try and make something happen out of nothing pressure brought up and almost bringing him i think down. they i think they called him down because the clock is still running so sawyer sanders was the one who almost made the sack happen put the heavy pressure on for the orioles as the punt 
Beautiful fair catch at the oh, he 49. Muffed he muffed it again. I believe he probably, I think he got onto it. I don't know. Oh, that's, yep, he did. He did, but struggles. Ooh. It has not been Ahmad Bundo's night. And it, I'm not, I, he had that mistake too on the kickoff where he let it go back, lost a huge chunk of yardage. He's, that's the second muff now. Yeah, I don't know what the officials are talking about right now. It was a clear muff, it was a clear recovery. Let's keep the game moving here. It's a, it's a chilly night. These players, you know, have had to deal with a lot of just kind of standing around this game with the, with the two power outages. Careful how I say that, I don't want to jinx another one. That would be crazy. But uh, yeah, this has been a, a tough game for these players with these conditions. You know, this has definitely been the coldest game this year. A lot of standing around and this is like the fourth or fifth time where the officials are discussing something and I, I don't exactly know what. <laughs> yeah, we've had power outages and we are just having discussions. Like, it, you never know what's going to happen and I, I don't know what all this lollygagging is about, but uh, good for you men in stripes doing your job. I don't know what exactly is going on as they talk to Bartlett. I don't think they're talking at all to Stockhouse. Once again tonight, tackle cancer night here at White Bear Lake. Obviously, you see all the players, or many of them wearing pink, especially pink socks, pink whatnot. And yeah, you know, everyone supports, you know, the tackle cancer night. Everything's, uh, you know, it's, al it's always a great event for the NFL, college, high school. It's always big, and it, I'm really confused why the ball is being spotted now at the 22-yard. It's a re-kick. I, I guess there's a re-kick coming. I, I don't uh, know. Did you see happened. anything on that play? I didn't. I was hoping you did, Josh. But nope. uh, Well, they're stopping it I, again. Yeah, this is this is bizarre right now, what we're seeing right now. We're, we saw them kick. There's the muffed kick. Now the White Bear's kicking again, but they're stopping because now they're explaining to the coaches why they have to kick again. But nobody knows why because, unfortunately, in high school, they don't, they're not wearing mics, so the refs can't explain it. So we just have to guess. I think they gotta get it going. They turned the heat off in the press box. I don't know if it's so we can help with the uh, the power outages maybe a little bit, but I, I wonder maybe if that's what they're they're talking about. They're just expecting another power power outage right there as that kick was happening, so <laughs> they, they weren't paying attention maybe. I, I don't know. I'm very confused right now. They just gotta get it going here, guys. Looks like they're they? talking to Bartlett here. I wonder if the repunt here. That's what I'm wondering if maybe there was a false start or an illegal formation or a penalty that didn't get reported, and that's why. But we're kicking from the same Ryan spot we Bartlett did earlier. Is yelling at the officials, maybe not yelling, but having a discussion with them that's maybe a little bit less than I friendly. Don't know what the but big deal is, though. I'm I'm confused because now the coach for Osio is coming onto the field wanting an explanation. Yeah, I mean the game is just taking Man. a halt at this point. Minute 16 still to go in the third quarter. Yeah, it, it started to feel like that this game was moving with Osio's drive. They're starting to move, and now a re-kick. But if you're if you're White Bear, you do know Osio's punt returner just muffed a punt. You know, if you can get upfield, maybe you can try to force another one, and this time recover it because that could work out in their favor. Well, this game going on later than more a usual Friday night, 9.15 already. Normally by this point, we're getting like right at the end of the game. Yeah, we usually probably have maybe five, 10 minutes left. Instead, we've still got a whole nother quarter of action here. Thank you all for tuning in on the horn. And once again, thank you to Pods. They've been outstanding supporters for the past few years. It looks like years. we're not kicking again. Oh boy. It looks like it's White Bear's ball, maybe. What's going on? I, I guess there's a too many men penalty. I, I'm i bewildered. This is really confusing what's happening. I, and I'm <laughs> looking around the, the box up here, and I really both teams just wanted yeah. to get, get going. Yeah. Osseo's coaches are right to the left of us. They look confused. I'm looking over at the White Bear coaches. They're laughing. They're confused, too. Nobody knows what's going on right now, I guess, except the officials. And the ball is being spotted at the 32. I, I don't know why that's happening because... I, you, everyone in the box right now, Zach. You know we've got the, we've got the PA guy next to us and the clock operator. Nobody knows what is happening right now. This has been a very, 
intriguing night to say the least. I I think so, this is when you you just flip a coin and whichever side it comes out, re kick. Uh, I am <laughs> so there was a so too many men on the field penalty on Osseo. Wow. And I think now okay, now I actually think I know what was happening. Is that yeah, crazy I think enough? I got it. I think what Ryan what Coach Bartlett was trying to figure out was if they accept the penalty, is it enough for the first down? Will they get the first down? Or will they have to re kick from fourth and two? So clearly they were gonna get the first down, but then they had to explain to Osseo's coach why that happened and why it didn't get announced right away. Well, Knudsen takes the snap and he's gonna take a shot looking for breaks, fighting, almost making the one-handed catch and almost being picked off. It was up for grabs. Bundo could have made it a better <laughs> what night. What a great for team. <laughs> for a high school game, this is great for a Friday night. Yeah, this has been tremendous. And that was a great throw right there by Knudsen. Breaks almost pulled in. But did you say Bundo? That is an awesome last name for a corner because every time he did. Bundo, Bundo. We're going to say Bundo. That sounds awesome. Because Bundo. Yeah. We'll that's an Bundo. awesome pl That was That's an awesome name to say after a great defensive play like that. Bundo. <laughs> Maybe we can get a nickname started if it's not as. This one, not. The I don't, I don't know if it'll ever gosh. beat Snowball, though, Zach. Snowball is great. Former soccer player for White Bear. And running off of the sweep to the left, not getting a whole lot is Matt Courier. Hasn't been used a whole lot, usually for misdirection and a lot of fakes, but able to get his hands on the ball, get a gain of about three yards and about third and seven coming up. We'll see... Wiper Lake has more than one play here. 45 seconds to go in quarter number three. Yeah. They're going to have to do at least one more play here. I wonder if this is going to be a throw here. I mean, you, you took a shot to breaks. They might take a timeout here. It looks like a little bit of miscommunication. Maybe not. I'd expect a pass, though, here for White Bear. Knudsen, shotgun looking to the right for Henderson. Great He's catch. caught the ball. At least a foot in bounds, and that's going to be enough for a White Bear Lake first down. And there's wow. been some great catches tonight by the uh, wide receivers. Absolutely. Henderson with a great jumping catch. I think we've said Cooper's name about four times for amazing jumping catches. But, yeah, nice play right there by Henderson. Throws up the 50-50 ball. Knudsen puts it on the money. Looked like a little bit late on the throw, maybe a second sooner, but great catch. 25 and a half to go. Out of bounds under center, giving the ball off. And he hasn't had his name mentioned much, but Cole Sather getting the handoff up the middle. Cole Sather had a solid game as well last game. He had two touchdowns, a two-yard score, and a 25-yard carry as well was in for Chris Heim, who I believe didn't play last game. But that should take us to the end of the third quarter here. 16 to nothing, still the score here for White Bear Lake. That's the end of the third quarter, your score. And the Oscar Orioles zero. looking to get and some kind of stop game. 12 minutes 16. to go. Do you think a drive here, any points for White Bear Lake, is that almost nail in the coffin? It's very close to, if, if not. I, I think at this point it would be tough for Osseo to even get three drives. The way Osseo's offense is built is to have those methodical short gain like go down the field slowly type of drives like we saw earlier where they took nine minutes off the clock. They've thrown the ball really well, but if White Bear Lake knows they have to throw, it's going to be really tough to pick up big chunks of yards. So, yeah, I think if even, even a field goal for White Bear or even just simply pinning them at the goal line, if they can't get in the end zone or get a field goal, pinning them within the five-yard line, that, that might be enough at this point with how good White Bear's defense has been. Because even with White Bear's defense, they gave up that long drive, but then they stepped up right at the end to shut down Osseo so they couldn't score. So, yeah, I wouldn't... Uh, I, I think, yeah, points at this point would, would mo almost seal the game for White Bear. Just with how much time is left, I don't want to say it would seal it, but it'd be very close. Trips to the left of Knudsen. One wide receiver out to the right. No tight ends. It's Sather. The tailback, Knudsen. Hands it off and immediately met at the line of scrimmage for no gain. It'll be third and long. For White Bear Lake. Bears looking to get this first down as clock continues to roll here. 
Fourth quarter now underway in what has been interesting game. 9:21 here local time. Uh, what a weird game we had. The oh. the weird punt situation at the end of the last quarter where it took about five minutes to figure out what too many men on the field meant for uh, the yardage. We've had two power outages, hopefully not a third at this point. I think at that, that point, though, they'd just call the rest of the game. But, yeah, it, what a weird game. Knudsen steps into the pocket. Looks like he's going to take off, and he'll get about a yard before he stopped at midfield. Tackle made by Deshaun Ricks, who has been able to get in the backfield so far tonight. He's had a solid night on that front line for Osseo, and a big fourth down stop for, or third down stop, forcing fourth down for the Orioles and forcing another punt from White Bear Lake off of the leg of Stanton. Frustration right there by Rayshon Brakes. He made a nice play on his route, and that's going to be offside. Well, if that's offsides, that should be enough for a first down. I believe it's fourth and five. It is fourth and five. Well, even if it's fourth and inches, if you're a white bear, you go for it in that situation. Although they haven't been able to move the ball well this uh, second half, they've been moving it enough to get one to even one to two yards, I think. Yep, first down. First down, clock will roll. And a new set of downs, and yep. that is big for White Bear Lake as they'll be able to drive now inside Orioles territory and get closer and closer for possibly a scoring opportunity either in the end zone or for Eli Trico to attempt his fourth field goal of yeah, the season. And that burns at least another minute and a half to two minutes as long as White Bear Lake keeps it on the ground because the clock will keep going. What a run from Lipscomb up the middle at a nice hole. Getting close to the markers, gain of probably 10 is what it looks like. It should be about second and inches, maybe second second and nine, getting a gain of nine, but beautiful run there from Lipscomb. That's what you need to do for White Bear. They haven't had that in a while. Those nine yard runs, they add up, but even for White Bear, even, you know, you love nine yard carries like that, but even just three, four yard carries at this point in the game will do so much for them. If they break out a big run like that though again, no one's gonna complain. Knudsen behind center. Anderson out wide. They give it again to Lipscomb. Why not? As oh, a couple holding, flags though. flying at the same time. It was kind of poetic watching those flags fly together. It was holding on White Bear. Yeah. That was a great it was a great move by Lipscomb. A nice little spin move. Breaks the forward for about four or five yards. Holding Pentley is going to draw that back. Second, it'll be second down in 10 or 11. And, you know, if you're White Bear, you, you go right back to the ground. You know, you had one carry that went for um, for nine yards, and then you just had one that would have had four or five. I think you got to run it again. Second and 12. I, I They might throw it here with Henderson on the field, but I'd like to see them power run it again up the middle. Both breaks and Henderson on the field. Henderson knows the play right away, heads out wide to the far side of the field. Oh, this looks like a throw to me with how they're, what, what formation they're in. In motion is oh. Sutter and getting clobbered, and once again, another oh, sack. Knudsen feeling that one, and Ricks once again getting into the backfield, and he is having a monster night for the Orioles up on that front defensive line. Yeah, that was an outstanding pass rush right there. I like the play call. They faked the reverse, looking for a throw, and I think he was getting ready to, and then Ricks just came flying in. You know, getting hit in the back is tough because, you know, you're not expecting the contact, and he drove him into the ground hard. And, yeah, we're seeing Knudsen walk around a little bit behind the play. He looks a little shaken up. Now he's going to stay in. He's clearly a tough guy. Under eight and a half to go here for the Bears. We'll see if Knudsen can muscle it out so far. It looks that way as once again, Courier in motion. They oh, give it to Brakes. Brakes using his speed, breaking tackles, getting down to the 20 and down tackled at the 16 yard line. Beautiful run from Rayshon Brakes. And that's why they love those sweeps to him and those handoffs because once he turns on the Jets, it's hard to bring him down. Well, Zach, that play design, that was awesome. That was what I talked about with making a situation look like a play that you've run prior and then doing something different. The play before, they faked that fake re that uh, reverse around the around the back and then threw it. That time he faked the reverse handoff around and then handed it to Brakes. 
on a counter play, and he had all kinds of space because the whole defense reacted to a pass rather than a run to the other side. That's a great play call. Sweep this time, it's to Courier, and that should be... It's been a flag almost all night. Wow, that's... I don't know how that's not a penalty. Yeah, he grabbed him up higher, looked around either the head or the neck, and the way he went down, he kind of got pulled down yeah. hard. That, that looked like it should have been a horse collar tackle to me, but... Bryce Hawthorne, the one making the stop. He's been in a running back as well for the Orioles, but that was... Uh, it definitely looked like there was a face max. The head turned, the body like flip into the side, falling down. The the whole motion just looked, looked like a, a penalty. Weird. But, you know. None of the judges seem to have seen it or considered it a penalty as Lipscomb up the middle for a solid gain as well. And they are down to the 10 yard line. And this is getting to be very close to maybe lights out here early as we are getting the six and a half minute mark and the Orioles, unless they can figure out how to drive against the Bears defense, you're getting close to panic mode for the Orioles. Well, not even drive the ball quick. You have to score, you're gonna have to score twice, two touchdowns and get two two point conversions at least in under six minutes. And right now their defense can't stop White Bears run game and their offense can't really generate anything unless it's slow moving. So this is gonna be Really tough, near impossible at this point for Osseo, I think. They pitch it to Brakes, who has the first down for White Bear Lake. Stay first in bounds. goal. Ball the Not able to stay in Brakes bounds, but the first Brakes. down, the crucial part. Fresh set of downs, and they are nearing the goal line. They have reached the seven-yard line. And yeah, they get the first down, but he did step out of bounds, so it does stop the clock with six first minutes and nine Bears, seconds. So remaining and you know I, I like the play call and I like the outside running because it's been there for White Bear but you know maybe in that situation trying something over the middle keep the clock going but they're clearly going for a touchdown right here to seal the game and that you know that's a that's probably that's the right decision because a touchdown ends it at this point. Courier sent in motion flags all around and we have a false start against the Bears and that'll push them five yards back and it'll make it first and goal from the 15 now. Yeah, tough penalty right there, you know, false start, it happens. I think it's the first false start penalty of the game for White Bear, so they've been disciplined offensively, a few holding penalties, but you know, nothing crazy, something pretty common, and if you're White Bear, you, you just go back to the run game right up the middle. First down and 12, you know, first down and uh, goal from the 12. I think you just keep running the football here. It's been working the, this whole drive for him. Henderson, the, load, the lone wide out, out to the far left, well away from the rest of the offensive line. Stacked offensive line is Knutson looks that way for Henderson, oh, who jumps catch. up, catches it, touchdown, touchdown, White Bear Lake. And the Bears with a statement here. Six minutes to go. Well, that shows what I know. I said you're going to keep it on the ground and run it up the middle. Instead, a phenomenal throw from Knudsen finding Henderson in the end zone. Again, I think Osseo is thinking the exact same thing as me. They're going to run the ball up the middle, keep the clock going. Instead, they're going to take a, a shot to the end zone and, uh, and uh, just make plays uh, to get points. 22 nothing now. Possibly 23 if Trichel can hit on this extra point. Trichel missed one earlier. It was blocked, but this one up and through and 23 nothing for White Bear Lake with six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Pressure now on the Orioles. They are going to have to drive down by three scores. And this is something for White Bear Lake as they're starting to smell victory number five, victory number three here at South Campus this season. After this game, they will have one more left of the regular season. That'll be here at South Campus this Wednesday against Totino Grace. Last year, Bears were able to dominate Totino Grace on the road. We covered them as well. Osseo last year. Bears were on the road. I don't remember if Osseo got the victory last year, but nonetheless, big statement here from White Bear Lake. 
and looking to end this two game win streak here of the Orioles. Yeah, White Bear Lake, they've been absolutely. Uh, White Bear Lake's been absolutely tremendous this game, so. And we, we just found out, thank you, Josh, that uh, the game next week has been changed to, I believe, 4 o'clock, did you say? Um, it looks like maybe that they may be changing it to 4, so we don't need to deal with lighting issues. Yeah, I guess uh, we found out as well that in the pregame at 6 o'clock, so an hour before the game, when they were testing the lights, they went out as well. So at three times tonight, the lights have gone out here, and... You'd have to imagine at the new high school, that's going to be something they're going to try to fix. Yeah, new high school coming from White Bear Lake. It'll be interesting to see. Hopefully we don't have anything like we've experienced tonight. And then those of you that experienced homecoming uh, with that blackout issues, for anybody wondering why we were not covering homecoming or games prior, had plans prior to that night. SEC TV covered uh, homecoming. And Pelicans made it clear for us not to cover as the pass oh. nearly picked off. But we do uh, as well, and a little bit away support SEC as well. They are a free streaming site oh, on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. So, you know, we love, of course, broadcasting the games from the horn. Mm -hmm. But if SEC TV is doing it as well, we, we do recommend them as well. They do a great job, and they, they are free as well. And that is, that's always fun, free high school sports watching. Give a shout out once again to Pods. Complete car care and accessories. Got them on the scoreboard. And Will Anderson and American Family Insurance as well. Thank you guys for supporting the Horn, especially throughout last year. Starting here, season 11 in the Horn, season two for myself. As Potrats pass well short, he was hit as he threw, disrupted the pass as Madden, the intended target. Madden, just one catch tonight. I believe that might just be his second target overall. And it's going to bring up third and ten here for the Orioles. Gabe, four down territory here? Absolutely. It's four down territory. If you're also, you've got nothing to lose. You try out some new stuff on offense, throw the ball, see what your quarterback can do. And we're seeing it right now where White Bear, White, White Bear Lake is expecting the pass. They're playing much tougher against it. It's going to be tough here for Osseo to move the football. And this is where if you're the, the coach for Osseo, you just uh, give your quarterback a chance, see what he can do. Well, there is a new uh, personnel under center, Nolan Trapida. Throw is up, hit, jump ball, and incomplete. Madden, again, the intended target. Cooper was in the area as well. Heim almost coming up with the interception. Instead, the ball will fall harmlessly, and it'll be fourth and ten. There is. Of the play. Um, Pass play. interference on the Bears? Is that what we heard? White Bear Nation, it's I guess down. not. Okay, well, this has been such a weird game, Josh. Like, like you said, I saw a flag. Too. I was like, I, I thought, thought I, I saw did. a flag, and it, like they moved on from it right away. And I, yeah, maybe it was. Uh, maybe they determined there was no call, but yeah, who knows? It's been a, it's been a it weird like, game so far. It sounds like it was uh, offensive Final. pass interference. Oh, and then it was uh, okay, declined by White Bear. Yep. What fourth, a bizarre! So that game. brings up fourth down. I'm just thinking this has been s definitely the weirdest game we have ever broadcasted at, for any sport. I would yep. say. I mean, two power outages, some weird, you know, officiating stuff. But nonetheless, it has been a very good game so far. Although not the highest scoring game, it's been a fun game. There's been some big plays. It looked like Osio was going to battle back, but White Bears defense laid the hammer down, and they've taken over this game completely. Osseo just hasn't been able to generate anything for the most part. It's They've got those couple drives, but they just have not been able to finish. White Bear Lake will close down pass I, it, within the red zone and especially within the 10-yard line. It's been impressive. They've had two big stops. Cooper, who it seems like in the open field, just has been able to catch everything that's oh, come yeah. his way. They've been able to break up a couple passes to him. He's been magnificent this game for, for Osseo. By far their best player, Cooper. When he's outside in those jump balls, he's been he's been catching almost every single one, and then running routes over the Fourth middle. He's down. beating his uh, his man every time. I, if you're White Bear, you're watching out for him right now on fourth down and ten. Oh, Bears also just doing an excellent job of securing and locking down Zakiel. Fourth down. Here we go. Sharapta. Blitz. Attempting to throw the pass to Delaney, looking for the pickup, said he doesn't get it, but that is turnover on down. So 
Potrots comes out and Sharapta taking a couple snaps at QB and Bears will take over 537 left in this one. We've seen it a few times this year, but I wonder if we're going to see Heidi Barber come in at quarterback now for White Bear Lake. I wonder if she'll uh, get an opportunity. She's she's a junior, has played a little bit. I know a um, few players on the team. I I know I've talked to. They they love it. You know she's a she's been she's a really good quarterback and she's been a great backup for White Bear. And she's entered the game late in some games. I wonder if she'll do it again right now. And for those wondering why Gabe is saying she, yes, there is a girl quarterback here at White Bear Lake. Something special, something unique. Looks like not quite yet. Not quite I see yet. Here walking back. That's all right. I was hoping maybe tonight, but I know on, on homecoming she did get to come in late in the game. The student section goes nuts, and you know I've talked to you know my uncle. She is a very, she is a good quarterback. He has said that she you know, she's not on the team by accident. It's not just because she's a girl. She is a legitimate good quarterback. She makes good throws. She's smart, and maybe next year as a senior, maybe she'll be the starter. Won't that be something? There's two girls on rosters within Minnesota. I don't remember where the other one, but there is a female long snapper as well somewhere in the metro area here in Minnesota. I believe it's the metro area, but something I, unique I saw on the Star Tribune. And it was, I believe it was a team that White Bear Lake faced this I, year. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure I heard about that. But it's very cool to see that. You know, integrated football, a lot of, if you're good enough to play, you're good enough to play. And I know the student section goes crazy when Barbara enters the game because she's done it a few times this year and she's earned it. Getting things situated along the sideline once again, it looks like between Bartlett and the refs happened a few times tonight. Bartlett doesn't let up. He fights for every inch, for every call. He's got it. Gabe's got it from him, I think. I don't know. You know, that toughness, the... Uh, I, don't know. I, I guess so, or maybe he learned it from me. I don't know. Ooh, it yeah, looks like uh, she plays for Mankato East. Oh, okay, never mind. We are totally off then. Unless Star Tribune is wrong. Delaney taking the snap and going out wide. Beautiful gain, but there is a flag on the field. We'll see what the call is, but it looks like this one will be coming back against the Bears. And really, that's one of the only bad parts about the Bears tonight is just the penalty markers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Josh, you're totally right. They've had a few costly penalties this game, but nothing they haven't been able to bounce back from. That's nope. been the big thing. They take penalties, and you know some of them have been... Not not smart penalties, you know, a few pass interference, but they always seem to bounce back from it. That's that's what you have to do with the penalty, you know. You get set back, but how do you bounce back from it? And so far, it's been really good for White Bear. They've been really impressive after that. First and 19, and it's Delaney under center for the Bears. Sends Courier in motion, will pitch to Courier. Courier trying to bounce outside, another doesn't flag. find anything, and yet another flag. <laughs> I'm guessing that's holding on White Bear, just where the flag is and how the play kind of got blown up right away. It is interesting to see Michael Delaney in at, at quarterback, the multi-position, multi-sport athlete here at White Bear, also a member of the White Bear hockey team, last year played varsity. Um, and I guess he's in, uh, he can play quarterback and safety in football. You know, sometimes an athlete is just an athlete and they can – you just tell them where to play, and they can play there. And I guess he must, he's one of those guys. Yeah, Michael Delaney he looks comfortable, too, taking snaps under center. Looks like he's done it before. Looks like this is something that they've definitely practiced as he's still in at quarterback. So Knudsen, maybe his night is done, and Courier might just be running this offense. Give him a shot. Why not? Ball being snapped and given to Henry Wilcoxon, who's in at running back and gets the sweep and positive gain there on second and 27, second and forever. Getting a little bit closer, still quite a ways to go for the Bears, but, or that was first down, excuse me, not second down. You know, I, I could be wrong, but I know um, Knudsen took a big hit on that last drive when he got hit from behind. I wonder if he's a little shaken up and they don't want to take any chances with him. Maybe not. It could just be the situation of the game, just not putting your starting quarterback and keep them healthy, but I wonder if that's part of it. Wilcoxon in motion, and they end up giving it. It looks like it's Courier on the carry. He stopped after a gain of a few. Number five, Max Courier, the ball carrier for the Bears. So third and third very long for White Bear Lake, just running the clock at this point, milking it. Orioles running out of time here. Orioles 
down to one timeout as well left in the half as we are inching the four minute mark. Third and 19, pistol formation, Courier in motion, Delaney throwing the football and it's almost picked off by Bundo. <laughs> wow, and Bundo again making another play. I'm, I love that name, that's my favorite name I think I've, I've heard during a, maybe a broadcast in general. But uh, but yeah, Delaney on the rollout, and he threw a dart right there, almost picked off. But again, he he can just do it all, you know. Great, he's been a great safety for White Bear this year, and I guess he can be a good quarterback too. I know he didn't complete the pass, but he looked really comfortable and made a great and didn't wasn't a terrible throw. Well, the snap is high. Stanton is able to punt it away. It doesn't go far. Bounces at the 21. Takes a slight White Bear Lake roll as it'll get down to the 17 yard line. That's where it will be blown dead. 3.46 to go. Orioles with the football. They gotta get into a hurry here. Down by three possessions. We'll see what happens. The passing game's been what's been effective for the Orioles for the most part. So maybe they'll generate something, yeah. but but it's got to start here. That's been because White Bear has been so focused and on stopping that run attack that they've had opportunities to throw the ball. But we saw in the last drive the the three or four and out, I guess, technically, for for uh, Osseo. They threw the ball four times, and White Bear was ready for it every time, and they couldn't complete a pass. So, you know, that might have just been because of the fact White Bear was so focused on the run. But, you know, they have moved the ball more effectively that way during the game. So you never know. They could generate something right now late in the game. Ooh. Pass complete to Sawyer Nelson getting his Passes first reception 16. of the night. Sawyer Nelson for the White Bear brought a heavy blitz off that backside. That was a smart play by the quarterback to get that ball out quickly, but man, he took, he's taking a shot in almost every throw that he's made tonight. Things are getting tricky to see up here in the press box. Our window is fogged up completely. Completely, yeah. I'm having to almost juke around Josh here. Okay, I felt like you had, you had troubles looking over me, Jack. <laughs> Pass incomplete as it looks like full-time quarterback playing time now for Sheropta as pass was a intended for Madden, who it looks like that's Sharapta's guy. Cooper hasn't really been targeted yet. 3.07 to go, third and short. Obviously four down territory here for the Orioles. We'll see what the play call is, but you think they got a few plays. Hopefully you can yeah. try to find the end zone, but 3.07, you don't no, it's at this point you're, you're just you're trying to, you're just trying some new stuff maybe that you haven't done normally offensively and Man, Ooh, White Bear Lake is pass. just bringing heavy pressure right now off the edges, forcing that ball to come out really quickly. Great defense. They're, they're just blitzing heavy. They, White Bear Lake has done their scouting report tremendously on Osseo. They knew the ground game was their strong suit, and they know what to expect when they when Osseo throws the ball. And they've been able to stop it. There's a reason Osseo has not been able to get any points this game. And White Bear's defense, they have had an amazing night, and they, they continue to right now. Fans starting to clear out here from South Campus's stadium. It has gotten really chilly here tonight. Sharapta over to Madden once again. Three targets in a row. Madden able to make the completion. We'll have enough for the first down to keep the drive moving as we are now under three minutes to go here in the final quarter of play. Bears. Yeah, we're sitting at a brisk 35 degrees and here I, in White Bear Lake. I gotta so. say, I checked that 30 minutes ago, and it definitely Ooh. feels colder now than it did oh, then yes. when it's at 35. And we do not have the heater on in the press box anymore <laughs> because of the power outages. So it has gotten really chilly here, but you know the players they still they still seem to be fine. So. <laughs> Sharapta from the shotgun immediately Big looks hit. to his left. Cooper this time the target, it's incomplete. Anderson I believe was the one in, con in coverage. And it was Dominic Anderson, tight coverage and just overthrows. Sharapta again, he's having to get rid of this ball so quickly, he can't even brace himself when he's getting hit. He's in his throwing motion. He's been just getting smacked tonight. And it's because White Bear Lake, they're bringing six guys every time. And instead of having an extra blocker, they're sending everyone on the routes. And 
you got to protect your quarterback here if you're Osseo. Quick throws, but have an extra blocker. He's just getting just he's getting hit hard and this you know, final quarter. I know that little bit of cold coldness in the air doesn't make those hits feel any better right no. now. And especially for a guy that doesn't move a lot in the pocket, there it is again. Pressure on Shirapta. He's just going to boot to the outside. Delaney Ooh. giving him a nice shoulder hit as he is hit out of bounds, 2.19 to go. As I say, he doesn't move around much in the pocket. He scrambles for about seven, eight yards, I believe. But yeah, and he, he lowered his shoulder at the end. He was gonna go at Delaney. He was not intimidated by it, by Delaney, who's a really tough safety, and I, I guess quarterback as well. Third and short, once again, for the Third Orioles. Down. Third and one. what they've got drawn up. Two more you downs. Gotta, you got to think throw because of the situation, but if they ran it for the first down, it wouldn't totally shock me. Sharapta being pressured and just getting it away, way behind Madden, but heavy pressure from the Bears on the play. That was Okunle. Just coming off the edge and chasing down Sharapta. Not able to get to him, but forces the incompletion. Yeah, you know, good pass rush again. Pressure coming off the back. Sharapta had to roll out. And again, as I say, he doesn't move around much back to back plays. He's scrambled for yards. But again, he's getting pressure. And the fact that he knows immediately he has to roll out like that, that's not good. That doesn't uh, that doesn't look good for your offense. And they're they're blocking an extra guy. I saw them block six guys on that play, and White Bear Lake still got a pass rush right, right away. Sharapta in center, two receivers to his right, one to the on the far side, and we have a timeout called by Coach Bartlett and the defense. That's a smart, that's a smart timeout. Fourth down and one, see what they're gonna show. Again, you want to get a stop right now, get the ball back, run the game out, you know, two minutes and 13 seconds left. And at this point, Osseo's just playing to try to generate a little bit of momentum going into the into the week so they don't get maybe totally uh, chewed out during a film session. But if you're White Bear, you're looking to get the stop, get your offense on the field, run the ball, you know, try to get a first down. If you get a first down, then you just take two or three kneels and game's done and get your victory formation. But I, I will say, I give a lot of credit this game to Dustin Holman, the defensive coordinator. He they, he came in with an amazing scheme tonight against Osseo. He knew what to expect, and he's made some really smart, just perfectly timed play calls for, right, for White Bear. Some perfectly timed blitzes, some nice deeper coverages. He's been, he, I think he might be the MVP tonight for White Bear, and this White Bear defense holding Osseo to nothing. Yeah, the defense has been great. They have held B.J. Zakiel, who is the key emphasis coming into this one. They have shut him down. He has not had one big play. I believe his best run was about 12 yards. And it was that one where it was they, that big push. Yeah, the <laughs> offensive line pushed him about 12 yards. He didn't even he didn't even get a he got hit right away at the line. They've been forced to go to the pass game, and it just has not been as effective. They've gotten a couple red zone trips. They've come up empty. Fourth down's been a struggle, but here they convert again, back-to-back -back fourth down conversions to keep the drive alive here for Osseo as time continues to wind down. And just get the first down if you're Osseo. Keep the offense on the field. Oh, we got a hurt player. And that's what you hate to see, especially at this point in the game. Hard to see who it is. Hopefully it's just a, it doesn't, it looks kind of like a cramp. cramp. Yep. Yeah, at this I'm, point in the game, it's been so cold. You know, maybe not hydrating as much because of how cold it is. Hopefully it's just a cramp and he'll be he'll be all right for the next game, hopefully. Well, we will let you know who it is when we can. This looks like a cramp to me by the way he's holding his leg. He's not squirming around, he's just kind of gripping one part of it. There looks like they're just kind of trying to stretch, stretch his leg on the field. Looks like a cramp to me, hopefully. Two minutes to go here, fourth quarter. Orioles keeping the game alive by keeping their drive alive, but Bears to the point where they're gonna win. Is it Stanton who is the one shaken up on the play? Stanton, the regular punter, getting in his rep as on defense. He just had checked in too as well for this play and not exactly what you wanna see. Yeah, and the roster is a linebacker or a punter, so must be good at both. 
So hopefully the Bears don't have to punt again for the rest of the night. I doubt it with 2.02 to go. Cooper and Madden to the right of Sheratop. Sheratapa and he will launch the ball down looking for Cooper. Anderson in coverage gets his left hand on it, just bats it away. Not sure you said Cooper Anderson, Zach. It is Iggy Cooper. Cooper Anderson, former <laughs> White Bear Lake defenseman from a few years ago, part of the White Bear 2019 state tournament team. Yeah, I botched a couple names there. Cher, Cher, <laughs> oh my goodness. It's, it's, back, it's, been, it's been a long night. The words it's been are a getting long, hard, the names are getting hard. It's been a long night, cold night so far. This game has gone way longer than expected, so. I think at this point we're all a little tired, but nonetheless, we've seen a good football game here tonight when there hasn't been confusion with the officials or power. Shara Pato over the head of Madden in coverage for the Bears. It's Aikens. And I think Zach's just a little excited for tomorrow. Yep, tomorrow, of course, Zach's 21st birthday. Congratulations again, Mr. Zach Chapman, on that accomplishment. I never thought he was going to make it, Gabe. We, we, we weren't always sure. <laughs> Shapers. All right. <laughs> We're just kidding, Zach. Well, third down, third and long. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Bears looking to get the stop. Two downs, back-to-back, -back, fourth down conversions so far for the Orioles. Sherapata in at QB in for Potratz, who had started the game, and Scrambling a share of getting the strip Balls out in the sack ball still loose. Well, it Do the Bears like, have it? it? Looks like Bears have it. Bears signaling yep. for it, Bears and they have it, have it. strip sack, Bears and that football. should do it. Beautiful play by the defense, stripping the ball out for the second turnover of the game, and that one should just isolate this one. It one timeout like left for the Orioles, one minute and 29 seconds remain. It looks like Heidi may be coming in. She is. Heidi Barber coming in for the victory formation, number 35 at quarterback. Come on, let her throw one pass. Well, does someone out wide, unmarked? <laughs> Heidi Barber will just hand it off. Play will go for a couple of yards. <laughs> Dang. That would have been fun to see her throw a touchdown pass on a late in the game, but not great sportsmanship if that would have been the case at this point in the game. You're just going to run the run the game, run the the game, clock out. And Dame Carrington was wide open on the left here, calling for the ball too. Avian Atkins... Listed as a defensive tackle or a defensive lineman for our chart, but you know, a good power back as well. Pistol formation, it's Barber. Thank you. Clock continues to run as it doesn't look like Osseo is planning to stop the clock. The Bears will just let clock run down. Barber take with the, the victory snap. formation. And she will take a kneel. One more snap to go. And Ryan Stockhouse will stop the clock. Bears with a huge shutout victory tonight at home. Through all the power outage, through all of it, the Bears stay true. 23 0 is what the final will be. Great game all around for White Bear Lake as that will wrap it up. The teams will line up. Clock will finish its countdown and whatnot, but. Big win for the Bears. They are now 3-0 at home. They are now, I believe, yes, they are 3 and they are 4 and 1, excuse me, in conference play. 5 and 2 overall. Gabe, final thoughts here from South Campus. Well, I really like what I saw from White Bear Lake tonight. Defensively, outstanding. They were as perfect as you could be defensively. No points given up. I think Osseo only had one drive go into the red zone within the 20 hard line of the White Bear end zone. You can't play any better than that on defense. So, you know, White Bear Lake, they're feeling really good about that. Offensively, had some hiccups, didn't move the ball as nicely at times as maybe they should have. Um, but nonetheless, they played physical, tough football, had some big plays. Rayshon Briggs continues to be the most explosive playmaker for this team. But... Again, they've got three or four running backs who can make plays. 
they've got Henderson, who's a great receiver, Brakes, who's crazy athletic. They have a lot of guys on this offense, and as we saw, they've got two guys who can play quarterback, because I guess Michael Delaney, who's a great safety for them, can also play quarterback and throw really well. So, you know, if you're White Bear, a lot of positives from this game. Offensively, move the ball really well. Defensively, you shut you shut them out. That's That's all you need to say. So, great stuff for White Bear, great momentum going into the last week of the year, and hopefully they can carry that momentum into playoffs with them. Yeah, great run game, especially from White Bear Lake. Lipscomb mm -hmm. and Rayshon Brakes just were outstanding. They mm -hmm. broke some big plays, especially Rayshon Brakes. His speed is such a difference on this team. He, uh, well, he would draw attention when they'd do those little fake reverses where he'd come all the way around and then they'd hand it to somebody else. He drew so much attention. And if you're White Bear Lake, there are times where yeah, he's going to get a lot of yards, but there can also be plays where he's a bigger factor just getting a fake and not getting the ball, and that's impressive. When you have a player like that who draws attention, even when he's not getting the ball, that is very, very impressive. Well, the Bears, like we said, they will be here on Wednesday hosting Totino Grace. The time originally is 7 o'clock. Well, there is word it could change, possibly up to 4. We'll see if anything like that happens, but... In the meantime, that should do it here from White Bear Lake. Once again, final score, 23 to nothing. Thank you for joining us here on the Horn. It's been a pleasure. Thanks to Josh Doerr running camera, added commentary. Jake Cox, amazing job running graphics production. Gabe Bartlett, as always, love having you on as color. And I, myself, Zach Chapman, saying so long here from White Bear Lake South Campus. You watched this White Bear Lake football broadcast here on the home of White Bear Nation, The Horn.